Mother Pantser, no! Don't page me now! What? He's trolling me now! Hello, my friends, and welcome! This is... The Shoe Matrix. Welcome to John Rambo Presents the Show. I'm OJ, and with me is the host of the show, the man who speaks at the top of the stairs from the bottom of his heart, John Rambo. OJ, is that you? What? Is that you? Hey, this is me. You're Hi. back. Yes. You're back. Yes. You've returned to us. I didn't disappear that badly, did I? We were all afraid that you left us forever. I we would never like leave that. you forever. That's what we all, we all thought. I, you know I can never leave you guys. You, you won't tell me where she's hidden! That's right. I forced you into this. The whole thing's over your head. Do you make a, you do this. Do episodes, they said. Do, do a quick show, they said. So how's it going, bud? Did you have a nice trip? Yeah, yeah. It was a lot of fun. Pretty crazy. You were with, uh, you were with the Octomom all weekend? <laughs> that was, that's what you were doing, right? N no, no. I was at Otakon. Oh, shit, all right. I screwed up. <laughs> yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, OJ has returned. It's good to Can be you back. talk about your adventures today? I'd like to. Okay. So, last week on the show, we were joined by Howard, as OJ was not present. Sorry, folks. We talked about uh, The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Which is an amazing movie. You saw it, right? You saw it like three times? Twice. Two times. You want to talk about uh, your thoughts on it today a little bit? I could. We just have to give the old spoiler warning. Okay. And uh, so we talked about Dark Knight Rises last week. We got a little, to a little bit of a political discussion, which is kind of strange for us. I don't know how this happened. You know, uh, this show is supposed to be about balls and shit. <laughs> so I don't know how this happened. But uh, a pretty interesting dialogue kind of broke out on the comments section about gun control and other stuff. and It's kind of interesting, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's I nice do apologize to, to anyone that was uh, off-put by this. We promise not to raise the bar that high ever again, okay? <laughs> not to touch it, Jeff. But uh, in all honesty, there were some good points being made by everybody uh, that I saw. It was, it was a pretty intelligent conversation. I was kind of proud of the audience, actually, that, uh, you know, everyone had an intelligent conversation with each other. And for the most part, it was pretty civil, so that was cool. They comported themselves very well. Yeah, I tend to believe that, you know, the truth in the matter is somewhere, you know, lies somewhere in the middle. And usually most issues, but uh, you know, that's it. everybody's entitled to their, their opinion. And all these well thought out and you know put forth in an intelligent way. I think it's cool, right? Well, yeah, without being like acerbic or mean toward anyone else. Right. So today on the show, we're gonna go deep into the annals of Shinaz Man Hole Punch, the Justice League episode number five, as we always like to do after we put out an episode. Yeah. And uh, you're gonna talk about uh, Uta Khan. Right? Yes, indeed. We established this already, didn't we? I hope so. And then one of our John represents the show correspondents will be joining us today. We now have a team of correspondents <laughs> that will uh, every so often come on here and talk to us about something that they would like to talk about. Yes. So, uh, Charles Mooney, he's, an, he's uh, one of these individuals. Cyber Demon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't he is uh, one of these individuals. And today we'll be joined by none other than the great Hazard. So to come on here and speak about something that's important to him. We're going to find out what that is when he, once he gets on. Yeah, it took me so long to realize that his name was Hazar and not Hazari. Yeah, I, I don't want to address this. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the Stay Ballsy IVN. You like that? Yeah. That, of course, stands for the Intergalactic Video Network. I stole that from someone. Someone posted that. I made a video the other day where uh, I was just speaking, you know, speaking my mind about some things and... Um, it's, I talked about the, the Intergalactic Video Network, and then someone posted Stay Ballsy IVN. That's pretty cool. So I'm, uh, I've been using that. I think it's a cool abbreviation. You know. Short and sweet. Gets it done. Yeah, when I thought of the name, I didn't realize I'd be saying it so much. It's not the <laughs> easiest, easiest couple of words to throw together. But I like it. But after I made that video, it, the, th the thing exploded. The people joined the network. And I uh, got many, many people joined. 
What we're going to do today is at the end of the show, we're going to read down this giant list of names and channels and stuff. Well, so that way we can give you, you know, appropriate amount of time and, and get it, you know, get it all out there. So. Wow, I'm glad I finished my laundry before we got to this point. Yes, yes. We're caught on fire. Or you can uh, hit the timestamp and you can listen to it right now because uh, I do timestamps now. <laughs> people, like, people like it. What is that, a horn? That was me. What, is, what was the, por- the purpose of it? Because it was a cheer, it was a fanfare for the timestamps because people like them. the timestamps? Why didn't you ever say anything? I, no, it's not because of that. It's just because you, you decided to do timestamps and people liked them. So I thought, yay, let's make a triumphant song, noise. I hit a timestamp for something that I didn't even do yet. Isn't that strange? Dude. Like, Jeez. there's a chance that you could just forget to do it, too. And yet... I uh, forget. But, but that chance I exists. I don't this. So anyway, as far as staybolsy.com goes, staybolsy.com, the ballsiest non-porn site on the web. You like that? I love that slogan. That's pretty awesome. I got. I, I, I'm good with these slogans. I don't know. I should uh, do marketing or something. Yeah, you but, should. <laughs> but next week on the show, we'll be announcing the solid launch date of StayBalsy.com. <laughs> Sorry. And it will be. It will be very soon. But I, I, I could have done it today, but I'm just a little unsure. I have to uh, talk to Carlos. You always want to double check this stuff. Well, next week we'll have a solid date. The site will be launched shortly thereafter. And then I'll make a video taking you, actually taking you through the, the site, which is going to be cool to do. I can't wait to do it. It's going to so be fun. You're going to have a video on the internet on how to get through a video site on the internet. Just stop. So let's talk about, let's talk about shirts. Shirts. Steve Ballsy shirt has done extremely well. I thank everyone that got one. Yeah, thank you guys. We realized somehow that we had five more than we originally thought. Uh, I think four more. Something like that. We had more than we thought, so... There was actually nine left, which is All right. awesome. I got to adjust the uh, figures, I think, after the show. Yeah, I'll give you a little count. We'll figure it out. Nice. Well, if you got one, please send in your pick of you wearing the shirt. We always like to have those on hand, put them in intros and, and all kinds of things. It's definitely cool. And it's just nice to see you uh, enjoying your shirt, you know? Yeah, I mean, Speaking we... Speaking of Hazard, he, Hazard's coming on later. He actually made a video of him unboxing it. Nice. It. So it's kind of weird to see it on the other side, you know, like and, he made it to the other side. And your handwriting, too. He crossed most of it out, though, to pr- protect his address. Aw, that's cool. <laughs> and last week on the show, we actually gave away a shirt. Did you know about this? I, I knew we were going to do it at some point, but I didn't know we were going to do it when I wasn't here. That's cool. Yeah, we did it when you weren't here. But we had five trivia questions that we asked, and uh, the first person to basically answer them all correctly and send it in got a shirt for free. And our winner last week was PS3 TNA. Another person whose name I always got wrong. And I felt actually pretty good that he won because uh, he joined the Stables Interactive Video Network and he actually made an intro video for the network and I somehow forgot to include him on the list. <laughs> Aww. So I felt really bad, but then he wound up winning the shirt and I, then I added him to the list. So I was like, all right, that's cool, you know? Okay, so it all worked out in the end. It all, it all kind of worked out. It was kind of in a weird way, you know? Frightening. Do you know about the Ramborgian wrestler? Eh? All right, so this gentleman on Twitter, his name is Kyle Vernon. He contacted me and he said, I am uh, becoming a pro wrestler in the UK and I'm going to have my first match in September. You know, and we started talking a little bit and he's like, would you watch my match and like critique it and start giving a review, a review on it, you know? Wow. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. That'd be awesome, you know? So I was like, by the way, do you, have a, do you have a wrestling gimmick? Do you have like a character? And he's like, no, I don't. So I said, why don't we ask the Ramborgia to uh, submit their ideas for what his gimmick should be? So we got a lot of them. And we're going to do is he's going to come on the show soon. And we're going to read them off to him and see if he, maybe he likes one of them. That's awesome. And he's going to come on. He's going to talk about um, before he hasn't even had his first match yet. So we're going to talk to him before his first match. We'll talk. We'll talk to him after maybe a few matches. Then we'll talk to him someday when he's you know a big star and all that. Dude, dude, that's the plan. I'll, uh, I, I, we just got to get this guy to have a glass of like a, a bottle of orange juice and crush it in his fist before every episode, <laughs> before every match. Do you want his character to be you? No, but I just think it would be hilarious if, he, if somebody did that. So if you want to contact Kyle, his uh, Twitter is at Sandman Gaming. If you want to say hi to him, he's the Ramborgian wrestler. And uh, please continue to send in your ideas for what his character should be or his gimmick could be. <laughs> so that's it for the errands, man. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I just thought of a terrible gimmick. What is it? You're going to hate me for it. All right, just tell me. 
He never takes off his hat. You banned a thousand today, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> talking about talking about squeezing some juice. Wait till we get off the air. There'll be some there'll be some uh, some juice being squeezed out of somebody. All right, so you so you went to Otakon, right? Yeah, I sure did. Want to talk a little bit about it, or? Yeah, sure. Now, take first us through it. Make us feel like we were there with you. Okay. Need a picture for us. All right. We arrive. It is Thursday. All right, don't do that. Just just do it normal. <laughs> All right. We arrived. It was Thursday, and it was incredibly hot. So picture yourself in the sweltering Baltimore sun. It's, it's mid-afternoon, approaching evening, and uh, registration is open. We get there, and there's people dressed up. The convention hasn't even started yet, and people are bringing out... What, I'm, what we're guessing are like their spare costumes just wandering around having a good time. The convention hasn't even started officially. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the key thing is everyone there was super nice. I mean, the staff were really cool. I went to go get my badge from uh, somebody dressed like Ash Ketchum from Pokemon. <laughs> and her, I, I looked to the left and her friend is also dressed as Ash Ketchum. And then a couple days later, I saw... I actually saw them down by one of the cafeteria areas eating. And then another, then the next day I could have sworn I saw them again. So I'm like, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to interview these people. I don't know if it was the same pair of Ash Ketchums, but you know, even the people who are volunteering were really getting a kick out of it. Have you ever gone to a convention where the people were not nice? Uh, seems like people are pretty happy having a good time. You know, they're usually pretty nice. I can't think it's of like, any- you know, it's like people go to these things like they're Woodstock, you know, they just want to go and hang out and have fun. Yeah, I mean, I remember there. I don't. I haven't ever seen anybody particularly mean. I mean, I've seen some people who like wouldn't mind cutting in line for something really popular and then kind of ignoring you afterward. Mm-hmm. But everyone's generally pretty chill, despite the fact that everyone's miserably hot, incredibly dehydrated, and um, in the middle of Baltimore, so we're all kind of lost. Well, you know, when it's so hot, maybe you shouldn't wear like the uh, you know thirty pounds of latex on your body. I know that you have to complete your perfect blade costume, but perhaps this is not the right time for that. This is why I liked MAGFest for being in the winter. That's true, yeah. So, it, basically, can, most conventions involve lots and lots of waiting in line. This time, what my friends and I did was we wandered around from almost the entire weekend. We went to two or three panels, walked through the dealer's room, walked through the artist alley looking for people we knew, and uh, basically just met some cool folks. We met a really nice guy from the military who was wearing a brony shirt and was incredibly good at impressions. We met a couple who were dressed as Beetlejuice and Lydia from Beetlejuice. How do you meet these people? How's this happen? You just kind of start a conversation? Um, those folks, we were waiting in line, and, they, uh, and uh, the military guy was in front of us, so we just started talking with him. We met... Oh, gosh. People walking through the streets. We met people when we got caught in the rain and we're just like eight or ten of us huddling in a bus stop waiting for the rain to, to, to end. We met a guy who worked at the Brio restaurant in Harbor Point who was just standing outside getting ready to clean up the tables and then motioned us over up to the underhang when the rain started so we didn't have to uh, get soaked. Uh, yeah. Here's the real question. Did you meet any Ramborgians? I'd say I met one in three quarters. One and three quarters Ramborgians? Yeah, now I have to confess That's like here. 17 normal men. Well, I have to confess here. Yes. I'm starting to rethink my not having a device capable of accessing Twitter slash the internet wherever I am policy. Yeah, because man. Because I... It's time to put on your big boy pants. I kind of dropped the ball here. There were, uh, there were a few people there who wanted to hang out, and I got enough time to check my email maybe twice the entire weekend. I still haven't even gone through all the tweets from the past 14 days. <laughs> and I completely And then what you do, you're going to bombard all. everyone with like a thousand of them at once. Yeah, pretty much. So I feel kind of bad about that. But I did run into um, one girl. And uh, we were waiting in line for the Voice Actors After Dark panel, which is one of my favorite things about Otakon. It's an 18 or older panel, so you have to have an eight, a wristband and show someone your ID to get in. And... Uh, it's, you know, famous voice actors talking about horrible, horrible things, like their personal history, 
or say answering a lewd question or maybe someone bringing them a copy of Fifty Shades of Grey and having them saucy read it in question. character. What? Some saucy questions. Saucy, lewd, out there. Some freaky stuff. So you have voice actors and you ask them like sexual questions? Uh, people do that. Because who would be an expert on sex? Of course, a voice actor. <laughs> Because they have amazing voices. They probably get laid all the time. Someone asked them, like, if you could be any other voice actor, who would you be and what would you do? And who would you do? Who would you do? Yeah, that question came up. A bunch of, a couple of them picked the same person. Nolan of- North, he gets laid every, every minute of the day. What, just has to open his mouth? Yes. If you know what he I just mean. Starts, like, climbing, he'll just start climbing a building. And he yells out, like, hey, Sully. And then he's p- p- tricks just, like, <laughs> undress. <laughs> Lovely. So uh, I must admit to you this: this, uh, this young lady that you're speaking of, she actually sent me a message, and she said, "John, I met OJ at Oticon." And I said, "Really? Is he behaving himself?" And she said, "Oh, he's uh, running into panels and screaming and knocking over vendor tables and acting like a total madman." I said, "Well, that sounds like him." Yeah, that's pretty much it. I was like, "That sounds a lot like him." Yeah, I didn't even re- like. I had to do a double take because she was actually sitting in front of us at the uh, voice actors after dark panel, just completely randomly. Did you give her like a picture or something? I got a you- picture at that point. Yeah, before they made us put our cameras away under penalty of losing the camera forever. Right. Um. Now there was another incident which boggles my mind. I don't. I honestly don't know what happened here. So a friend of mine found it a uh, forum post saying, yo guys, there's going to be this cool party at this bar right near uh, the convention and whatnot. It's, I think it was called the Over 9000 Party. And of course. So we get there, and we get there at like the worst time. Like It's really quiet. Almost everyone's left. Nobody's around. So we hang out. We get one drink each. and then the Insert meme. The insert meme party. If, <laughs> if by meme you mean euphemism, yes. And then we end up leaving, and there's these two guys who walk out behind us, and they start talking with us because I, one of them says, Hey, hey OJ. I'm like, wait, what? He's like, oh, sorry. Is your, and he goes to me and says, oh, sorry, is your name AJ? I'm like, no, sorry, I thought you said OJ. And we just start talking with these guys for a while because apparently they were, weren't trying to call me over. They were trying to talk about something else. But whatever, we're talking with them. And then one of the guys says, yeah, we're actually moving to Brooklyn soon, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, cool. So I write down, I had mentioned karaoke at one point. So I wrote down the karaoke bar we go to in the city on a business card of mine and handed it to him. Right. And uh, as we were walking away, he said, uh, hey, stay pulpy. And I turn around, I'm like, wait <laughs> a second. He's messing with you. I think he was messing with me. Wow. Yeah, which is surprisingly, well, unsurprisingly easy to do. So that was You're like, fun. my name is Howard. What are you talking about? <laughs> my name is Frederick von Tinkelberg. <laughs> so speaking of that, I know, I know we're getting off topic here. We'll let you go back to it. But are we going to do the uh, the Rimborgian meetup? In the city? Because a lot of people have been asking me about that. Is this something you're still interested in doing? Yeah, dude. Where, you, where do you want to do it and when? Probably like Central Park or something maybe. I don't know. I'd say Central Park or Rockefeller Center. Probably Central Park is just a bigger area. And we can go raid the um, Bouchon Bakery. And uh, are you gonna buy everyone uh, b- uh, pastries? Uh, they're like six bucks a piece, man. I can't <laughs> buy everyone a pastry. Are you gonna buy yourself a pastry and just stand there eating it for everyone? Of course not. I'd sit down. This is the <laughs> jump we're talking about. <laughs> you go up to say hi to you and you just have it all over your fingers and face. Yeah. Well, hey, there's also a Belgian waffle truck. So, well, if you go to Rockville, they'll be calling me at Nintendo. I was thinking me at the Nintendo store. That's what I was thinking, dude. How how much would that rock? Oh, that, yeah, I mean, there's not much to, the frell, there's not like a hell of a lot to do in there. True. You, well, you can street pass to your heart's content, but yay. All right, we'll figure this out. Yeah, dude, we got to do it. Bef- I don't know if you, we should probably do it either before, before summer's over or after the weather before becomes September. Okay. All right, we got it. We got to get to planning this because uh, I got another convention soon too. All right, details to come. Yeah, but um, continue on your, continue on your tale here. Okay, so. There was that. Um, now, the one thing we always do in, in Baltimore, we kind of make a tradition of it. This is a place called Mom's Federal Hill Grill that serves uh, heart attacks on a plate, which is a deep-fried cheeseburger. 
we don't always order the deep fried cheeseburger, but we do always stop by. And uh, that was fun. We went there one night, you know, had a cab take us over, got some drinks and ate copious amounts of food because, dude, they know how to cook. But one of my friends ordered a salad and was feeling somewhat shouldn't have gotten the salad. Don't get salad. Get like a burger. Definitely. But uh, other interesting things about Otakon, there were this this convention had so many cosplayers. It was amazing. Now, I, I figured I'd do the same thing I did at PAX East, which was record people, you know, do a brief, like, three-question interview about their costume yes. and then make a video. I interviewed probably no fewer than 28 people. Huh. Maybe no, no fewer than 20, between 20 and 28. We'll be seeing some videos on Fresh OJ Sub Pulp. Very soon, hopefully. See, I set you up like that? Like that. Yeah, you are amazing in that regard and that's many right. others. Yes, that's, that's true. Um, Mostly in the bedroom. I wouldn't know. But anyway, you might, know, you might know something. There were some really elaborate <laughs> costumes. That, oh, one other thing that I wanted to point out. So I was looking for some of our friends. Um, the people we run into. One of my friends knows the Omnamapia people, and uh, there's of course um, Athena Swink, where the white mage works. And yeah. I just couldn't find them. Either I'm a complete idiot, or Otakon's policies this year made it kind of hard to find because. Tell us about that. Well, I, as some of you might, might have gathered, I applied to you know, get a booth at Otakon this year. But I was unable to achieve one because this year it was a lottery system, completely random as to who got in and who didn't. So I was not chosen for lottery, so I couldn't, get, I couldn't you know, host a table. And I think and a lot of the familiar faces that I expected to see from, from past years were not there. Huh. So, I mean, it's kind of cool because you get to see new stuff. What's going on? Why are they doing this? I'm not sure. Maybe they just wanted to keep it from being the same old faces every year round, or they didn't isn't want that, to. Isn't that some... your user base, though? Isn't that your customer? You want to, you know, that's your solid. Yeah. Piece, yeah. You know? I mean, one thing I barely saw any of. Usually when you go there, like in the dealer's room, I don't know if they have the same policy there, but the dealer's room, usually you see a ton of places selling anime DVDs and manga. I saw like Funimation, a couple, you know, a couple of official booths like that. One or two, one maybe bookstore that wasn't like a big fancy schmancy bookstore, mm -hmm. and the rest was you know t-shirts and knickknacks and costume stuff, you know that you'd expect. But almost no manga and uh, DVD sellers, unless of course um, you wanted hentai, of which there was plenty. <laughs> Didn't you partake in some sort of uh, auction of some sort? Yes, I did. There was an there's an art auction for. Hey, if you didn't make it into the official, you know, booth thing, you could still submit some art to the auction. They always have an art show where people put in some of their crazy stuff. Some guy painted up a Batman car. Yeah. And I think they had it there for forty thousand dollars. There was also like a ten thousand dollar painting. There were plushies. There was all sorts of good stuff. And uh, I put in five candles, and. Uh, it's funny, I sold two of them. And the ones that I thought would sell didn't sell, and the ones that I didn't think would sell did. So It's not bad, though, because you probably, you know, the ones that you, you thought would sell will probably sell somewhere else, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm still Those auctions out. are totally different than, you know, you at a table where you could, like, talk to the people and show them. And let them sniff it, because it. it's behind a glass case. I don't think people... Yeah, I mean, it was behind a glass case. It could be just, you know, the light isn't hitting it properly. They just don't notice it, or there's something else yeah. close to it that's cool, or, you know. You, you, gotta, you, you, you gotta hold it in your hands and experience the full experience. You gotta put your hands on it, squeeze it, mm -hmm. rub it, massage it. And how. Yes. So, I mean, that was cool. So I only had to take three candles back home with me instead of five, which was nice. It gave me plenty of room for the ridiculous, stupid stuff I bought. What'd you get? Anything cool? I bought a print from this guy who was really cool. He was he, he made, he's writing a comic, but until then he was just making paintings, you know, using some of the characters from it. It's a Western, but with like, it's like an, an East meets Western thing. Like I just saw, it was this, it was this print of a painting with a dude just kind of sitting in this burnt out western town with like um, an eastern style hat just kind of staring there alone in the dust. And I thought it was a really beautiful painting. Um, so I picked that up right quick. 
And uh, I bought a new hat. Oh, by the way, this guy is Kurt Einhaus. Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah, K-U-R-T-E-I-N-H-A-U-S dot com. Pretty cool fellow. Um, I created it to comic? Uh, it will be eventually be a comic in the coming months. So he writes it and he, and he uh, illustrates? I believe so. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I also ran into Mookie of Dominic Deegan, a webcomic that I, that I like, and not just because it has puns in it. And uh, the Sorcery 101 folks, I ran into them, who also had somebody else, another artist who was there, um, for, I think, the Rune Writers. And I just I walked over. The, the, I bought the Sorcery 101 person's book. She said, oh, yeah, this person who worked out on the book is over there. You can go get it autographed by her, too. Wanted over there. They're all really nice people. Um, Krakow Studios was there, the Spinneret folks. All sorts of good stuff. And everyone was really nice. I mean, even on Sunday when they're exhausted and they just want to go home, there's, the people who, you know, who are stuck there at their booths are still cheery and happy to see you. Good, sir. Sounds like you had a great time. I did. Is there anything uh, terrible happen or anything smooth? terrible? Mm, I think it went pretty smoothly. We got to see a panel on just basically what the frell was Japan thinking. Oh, um, as far as when, as far as what? Uh, there's a music video that I have to find the link to, which starts so like off the, all like all the weird stuff. Yeah, like okay. uh, like the show with you know the moving walls and you have to get through it. Okay. And you know that's hard enough, but then you see Japan super hard mode. Yeah. And uh, um, just commercials for things that make no effing sense whatsoever. <laughs> um, just there was like a four to five minute long commercial. I can't even remember what the commercial was for. It was just this guy in kabuki makeup with these four young girls just shouting and dancing and making clicking faces. That sounds great to me. I would buy whatever they're selling. Yeah, and then okay. one last thing. It ended with this music video that it just looks like, okay, it's a music video with this guy in strange face paint, whatever. And it just goes to a dark dark place when you realize the fellow in the library accidentally unplugs his headphones and the music comes out the speakers. I cannot okay. describe it to you. You have to experience <laughs> it for yourself. Do you, make, do you recommend that the Remborsian members attend this convention in the future? If you're interested in anime, Japanese culture, or buying ridiculous handmade items or having someone commission art for you, then yes. You think I should go or you think I would cramp your style if I was there? You wouldn't cramp my style. I mean... I mostly spent my time wandering around interviewing cool people. I think I would have to give you your, your space because that's, that's your domain, you know? I will say I felt... I'm thinking about going to like a bunch of conventions next year, though, just to film stuff. Yeah, dude. So I think it would be, be kind of interesting. I'll admit, though, I felt really bad because every year I go with my friends and if I'm not dressed up, I'm filming or photographing people. Yeah. So I, I keep apologizing to my friends. Like, I'm so sorry that I uh, took up all this time and, you know, went off to go film, blah, 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 blah. Like, it's cool. We're not in a rush to go anywhere. Just go film who you want to film. So when, so when you go film, what do they do? They just watch you or they just go off on their own? Both. Sometimes they just watch me because usually it's pretty quick. Well, make sure you, uh, you, know, make sure you put the, the footage out so it's not, like, you know, done for nothing. No, it's not going to be done for nothing, man. I, I, I sorted okay. all my videos. I'm going to get probably part one out tonight. All right, good. Yeah, yeah. So, youtube.com slash fresh over some pulp. Yeah, yeah. Check out. All the Otakon footage. Footage. Yeah. So I've been kind of relaxing after uh, <laughs> uh, she has me a whole punch. The push of doom, sir. Which we're going to talk more about later. But yeah, I was in San just, just doing it. And I finished it on uh, Thursday, last Thursday, right? Yeah. Like we recorded the show on Wednesday and then I got the show up and I put the final touches on the episode. I made a video where I talked about this also, but it was like the first night in like two weeks where I'd, I had nothing to work on. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is cool. I got the whole night. It's like it's like 7 o'clock. I was going to like sit down and watch something, a movie, I don't know. You know I'll watch yeah. wrestling, whatever. It's going to be fun. And then I like, you know, I like the, the video's rendering, and then the lights go out because there's an insane storm comes through. <laughs> like it made no sense because um, <coughs> I literally barbecued. Okay. Then I... Uh, Watered the plants because I have some plants outside. I watered the plants outside because it was such it was so nice out. Ten minutes later, hurricane. 
Oh man. And the lives like that I'm just in pure darkness for the rest of the night. I'm like, what is going on? You cannot on? catch a break. Dude, you need a DS or something. I have a DS. Well, did you it's play not charged it? though. Ah I have DS light. That's the best one. It is. But, but uh, you know, after that it was, it was it's been fine and you know, obviously the episode came out, it's done really well. And, I made a couple videos, as you guys as, as you guys know. Yeah. But uh, the other thing I've been doing, I've been watching the Olympics. Yeah, we actually saw a little bit um, from the, our hotel room too. I'm enjoying the hell out of it with the opening ceremony I watched on Friday night. Oh my gosh, dude! That we, we were watching it in an Uno's. That was effed up, man. What do you mean? What do you mean? That was crazy. Yeah, they went all out. That was insane. They had paratrooping, whatever his name is, guy who plays James <sighs> Bond and. Mr. Bean. Rowan Atkinson, the man, Black Adam. No, it was himself. awesome. I mean, they, they had all the, uh, they had this whole segment that I really liked where they had all the great, you know, British uh, musicians and stuff. And obviously there's a great history there, you know. But they played the Sex Pistols and the Clash. Yeah. Which kind of blew my mind. And Can't they deny played it. God Save the Queen. But the problem is I didn't get to see that part because I think I heard part of the song, like the opening. <laughs> and then they cut to commercial. Yeah. And like, and then they come back and like the whole thing's gone because it's all, you know, it's all like on delay anyway, you know? That's something that like, it's funny. Nobody, like, nobody cares about until like it happens and then we're going to go back to not caring after it's all over. But that is pretty lame. <laughs> and then I, went on, I went on Twitter and I was like, they just play, they just play the Sex Pistols? People were like, yeah, they did. You know, I was like, oh, cool. You know, I didn't even get to hear it, but I just thought that was a cool thing. You know? Oh, yeah. I really enjoyed the opening ceremony. And I've been watching as much stuff as I can. You know, I watched uh, a lot of the swimming uh, the diving, I watch the volleyball, like stuff I wouldn't even watch, you know, normally, but it's the Olympics. I'll just watch anything. Did you see the <laughs> kayak slalom? I did not. I didn't know that was a thing. They built a whitewater rafting course. Wow. And basically, if you touch one of the, like, one of the poles you're supposed to go through, it's a two-second penalty or something. If you miss one entirely, it's 50 seconds, and you have to go through on the right side. Yeah, there's just so, there's so much coverage, dude. It's insane. Hey. Well, I'll pretty much watch anything. I just, I just love the competition. I love like, you know, these people basically train their entire lives for this moment, for this, you know, for this event. You know, I have a lot of respect for that. To. So, people yeah, man. So everywhere. I pretty much, I pretty much watch any uh, event I can find. I just watch, but there's so much. There's like, there's like, tw there's like thirty channels of like specific, of just sp specific sports. I don't even know this because I'm looking on like I'm watching like NBC. And I'm watching this or that, and I'm like, there's a basketball game I want to watch. I couldn't figure out what channel it was. <laughs> so, I, again, I had to go on Twitter. I've been asking, I ask people on Twitter, th like, questions that aid me in my, in my uh, daily life, which is pretty funny. <laughs> I'm, just like, I'm like, does anyone know what channel the basketball is on? Like, like, 10 people are like, yeah, it's on this channel, blah, blah, blah. So, there's an Olympic basketball channel. That's just basketball? Just, just for basketball. There's a channel for, like, each sport has its own channel. Oh yeah, did you see there's a, there's an image going around on the internet of one of the one of the teams, I think Tunisia, after they played against the Americans? Yeah, it was yesterday I saw that. Yeah, and then right afterward, one of the Tunisian guys was like, "Well, this is my chance to talk to Kobe Bryant." Yeah, you guys autograph. Yeah. <laughs> I yes. mean, it's like, wow, man. Like think about that though. They're from probably a place where I don't know how important basketball is, and here you are with one of the greatest players, regardless of his personality, which I've heard things about. I don't know the guy, so I can't vouch. But come on, that's kind of cool, man. He was found not guilty, okay? Of what? He was found not guilty. Not guilty of what? Don't worry about it. But, uh... <laughs> okay. But, yeah, the, the basketball stuff, because I'm a big basketball fan, and, like, obviously they, they win all the... They win, you know, the game's big. But it's cool to see them, like, play together in, like, a, in a different environment and stuff, you know? Like, this isn't what... They're not going... Like, this is people that they normally would be, like, fouling and whatnot, throwing to the wood... Like, what's up, man? Well, the other teams, the other teams aren't as good, but they they try. They try hard, you know. Excuse me. It's fun. They tried so hard and got so far, and in the end, it really did matter. Right. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, the NBC stuff is not really that good. Like, just the, the regular NBC coverage. Yeah. Like, they do a pretty good job of uh, explaining the storylines. And what I mean by that is, like, that's that's when you get into sports when you know about the characters and or the the participants, they do a nice setup. They go, oh, this is so-and-so. He's from here. This is the stuff he went through, you know. There was, yeah. one, there was one woman 
swimmer, and I can't remember her name because I, I just don't remember this stuff, but four years ago in Beijing, she was left off the U.S. team. She didn't make the team, right? Yeah. Four years later, she made the team. She won the gold medal, as I saw, and she set the world record. Nice. That's just awesome stuff, man. Well, there's one thing. It seems like it's funny. Like I do notice that sometimes, though, they seem to be adding drama. Like, oh yeah, it's, like, yeah, it's over, overly. Uh, well, they're like this person. They're, they're talking about how strong and you know how much, how awesome this person is, and how you know no matter what happens, they always persevere. And then when they lose, they say, they talk about how destroyed they are and stuff. Like, you just this person's strong, man. You, you're gonna you're making it harder on them. Yeah, and they were kind of hard on Michael Michael Phelps, and it's like, oh, how could, how could this, oh, we got fourth? How could this happen? It's like you, you know. Everyone has any, every athlete has their prime, you know. Like you, you come yeah. up and then you come down. It's just how it is. So well, didn't he break the? Didn't he tie and then break the record? Yes. Uh, yeah, he got a gold yesterday, I think. And and he had the silver the day before, so he has the so tied 15 to the most medals. medals. Yes. Well, one thing, though, I loved him. Like, and Michael Phelps shatters the record. Um, shatters is shatters is like doubling it or getting like three more. <laughs> I mean. Tying and then going one over is insanely impressive, but your metaphor is a little over. Yeah, you know, it's impressive. Yeah, Don't get me wrong; that that kicks having butt. Yeah, that's just how they do it. But yeah. my, my, my main complaint about the NBC broadcast is like, there's so many commercials, man. It's insane. Like it's crazy, man. I never saw so many commercials for any kind of broadcast before. Do it's like every it's like every couple minutes. It's like. <laughs> Like what are you doing? Well, I, I've been told you can w that. First of all, NBC it's on a delay, right? So it's yeah, on it's all taped. They, they take all the footage and they cut it up. Despite it being like live everywhere else, right? No, well, here's the thing. Like I, I have uh, Xfinity, so I have you the can live watch channel. Watch it live online. That's the, that's what I was getting to. Yeah, but I have. I could also watch it on demand, or if there's this, like I said, there's specific channels. For oh, that's school. cool. Yeah, so it's 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 pretty cool. I mean, it kind of revolutionizes the whole. Uh, the whole thing as far as like watching because I, I think in the past you would be stuck with just that NBC cut up footage with their crazy commentary and all that and now you can actually now you could actually enjoy it and watch whatever you want <laughs> and wh whenever you want whatever room in the house you want just pick up your laptop and wandle why are you doing a commercial for them now what's going on what Plus, and it's an HD too yeah. oh that's pretty cool well I actually got a uh, I got a message for from from someone I want to read off it's from George SSF4 he says, what's your opinion on how you can't view the Olympics online if you don't have cable or satellite service? It seems like NBC does not give a crap about people who only use antennas, but who also want to watch the games online. I mean, why do you need a service that, that you only use a fraction of in order to see the Olympics? What if I don't watch TV much? Am I a second-rate citizen all of a sudden? For the Ramborgia. So yeah, apparently if you don't have, uh, you know, you don't pay for certain things, you can't watch, you know, watch the stuff online. Yeah, it's like I'm, dude, I'm paying out the face for internet service from the cable company, but I don't get diddly. And it's the same company that provides you with the TV. Yeah, same one. But you can't watch it. <laughs> nope. 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 Yeah, man. I mean, you know, we talked about this uh, a couple shows ago. The cable companies just nickel and dime you, and yeah, dude, they're, they're that like, sucks. They keep sending me messages like. Hey, did you know that you can get cheaper internet with if you get cable and phone? I'm like, I don't want TV and phone. I I'm happy with internet. Just give me like cheaper you, internet. Yeah, I feel like the Olympics is something that everyone should be able to enjoy. I agree. Because it's like people are presenting their families and their countries, and you know, I wish they wouldn't act this way and allow, especially if you're paying for internet, that. People should be able to watch their, you know, countrymen compete and stuff like that. So, nope, that's a bummer. Give me your money. <laughs> yes, that is correct. <sighs> but uh, that's it. That's just my uh, thing on the Olympics. I'm enjoying it. You can keep watching it. Yeah, and if you can, take a brief look at the uh, kayak slalom because that is just insane. Okay, I want to find out if there's a channel. There's probably a channel for that. Yeah, I know. It was, it was on a couple days ago. Okay. Just Google it, man. So why don't you give some of your thoughts on Batman? I'll, I'll put a spoiler warning in here. We talked about it a lot last week. But just kind of give, uh, maybe if you have some perspective on it. All right. You saw it twice. Yeah. 
All right, what do you want to say about Spoiler it? Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Okay, so... <clears throat> I should probably drink water before this. Here we go. Oh, boy, here he goes. He's got his knife and fork. He's ready to ca carve this thing up. All right. So I, 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 I very much enjoyed The Dark Knight Rises. Um, I'm not going to go off into my usual nitpicking rage um, <laughs> as much as I usually do. Because I saw the movie a second time. And it, I liked it better the second time. Okay. What's nice about... I mean, well, the movie does some things in it that I think is pretty cool. Like, they trick you. Like, they put obvious clues in there to show you that the narration you're getting in the prison pit isn't necessarily accurate. For example, mm. they're talking, when they're talking about Bane having his face shredded, you see Bane having his face shredded, and you're like, oh, yeah, the child's escaping. But, she, but the child's Bane, but... But, but the first yeah. time I saw it, I just kind of glossed over it. Like, okay, look, there, there goes Bane. Huh? His face. I is remember normal. there was a point, but there was a point in there where you're like, you're like, this doesn't make sense. Yes. You know, but then yeah. you know, obviously at the end when it's, you're like, okay, that's what you know. Yeah, and it made sense also because they were putting in some cool stuff from you know old Batman lore or whatever. Um, <clears throat> they almost kind of made you want it, like you say, like you said, they almost made you kind of want to figure it out. Because yeah. they didn't have to show, like, the kid, they didn't have to show a lot of this stuff. No, but they wanted to... Or they to... didn't even really have to explain it either in a lot of ways. They could have just hit you with the swerve at the end, but they tried to they tried to kind of lead you to it. Yeah, they soften you up a little bit. So but it's... still, at the same time, it wasn't really easy to figure out. So when the swerve comes by at the end, mm -hmm. you don't just go, that was out of nowhere. You go, oh, like, oh I'm an idiot. Yeah, 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 I am. <laughs> um, another thing that someone pointed out, a friend of mine pointed this out that it was, I don't know if it was you, John, but in one of the previous movies, they said, oh, yes, this is lighter armor. You'll be able to be more flexible, but you're more vulnerable to a knife. And then, lo and behold, no, that wasn't in this me. movie, that wasn't you? No. And then, lo and behold, in this movie, he gets knifed in the armor. Like, I don't think they planned that from way back when, but it's still kind of cool if you watch it. Yeah, but I'll know he recovers from it, like, right away. Well, it's only a knife in his liver. He's okay. <laughs> He's got two kidneys. Yeah. Um, you. At first, I was upset about like how dumb he was when he was just fighting Bane, like freaking out and whatnot. Yes. But you pointed out to me that this is comic book. This isn't comic book Batman. He fought thugs the entire time. He never fought like Killer Croc or Clayface or any of that nonsense. So. Well, I brought that up last week with Howard, and some yeah. uh, one person got upset with me. They actually sent me a, a message. Really. And they were yeah they were like what are you talking about. Uh, He's like he was he, he had nothing he was desperate he had nothing he could do. My problem was this like he saw footage of Bane and Alfred says to him, "Look how f big he look how strong he is look how fast he is right." Yeah. So he knows he's big and he knows he's fast he knows what he looks like so he, and then there's the point where he's about to fight Bane and like Batman's supposed to be the world's greatest detective so he's supposed to before he just runs into something he figures shit out right and Bane has a glaring weakness on his face. So yeah. Batman, knowing that he's over, you know, the guy's bigger than him, what he does is he really runs at him and goes for body blows. <laughs> See, yes. And proceeds to body blow him for another half hour. Well, that's the other thing. I mean, comic book Batman, like, would probably have just dove into the sewer when he realized this guy's too strong. I got to get out of here. Well, on top of that, wasn't he going to find Bane? Was it, wasn't that what was going on? Yeah, he wanted to find Bane. He was trying to find him, so you think he would have some kind of a plan of, of uh, how he was going to fight him. Yeah, and so... It goes beyond, like, I'm going to run at him. That just further illustrates that this is, you know, this is movie Batman. He's a different man. He's not as much of a genius as comic book Batman is. He's not as much of a gadgeteer as, Lucas, as Lucius Fox. Whatever. It's okay. It's a different well, I guy. Known. I think it would have made more sense if, if this happened, right? You know when he turned the lights off? Yeah. If that was the first thing he did... Like, he takes the lights out, and then he tries to sneak up behind Bane, but Bane just rocks him. Yep. That and then he's injured for the rest of the battle, and that's why he's kind of, he can't really that, put, a, put together something. That would have made more sense. That would have um, been cool, I think. <clears throat> there were two things. There's just two quick things I want to say that are negative before I talk about how cool the movie is again. Number one is that if anyone's seen Dragon Ball Z, the bomb was made with Frieza technology. Because... It, the pacing of the movie, I think, at the end, when they were t ticking down the time on the bomb, it was a little jarring for me. It was like, we've got five months. 
We have 23 days. We have 11 days. We have 23 hours. We have 11 hours. We have five hours. We have 11 minutes and 38 seconds. 11 minutes and 12 seconds. 11 minutes. And then it's like five minutes and then goes down. It, it, it wasn't even. And if you're going for the effect of, wow, this is jarring, crazy stuff's happening all the time. You can't even keep track of anything because, you know, this is, it's a crazy world out there in Gotham. Cool. But to me watching it, I was just kind of, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. We just saw like 18 minutes of footage and it's been 30 seconds on the clock. I would have been happy. Yeah, well, I, yeah. Like, it could be like what they're showing maybe happening at the same time as something else maybe. Yeah, yeah. That's, like, it doesn't that's, have to be, it doesn't yeah. have to be perfect continuity well, with like time. I just would have done like, instead of making it stay in the 10 to 11 minute and 30 second range for about 15 minutes of movie time, 25 minutes is just as dangerous as 11 minutes really if you're about to die. You could have just, you know, cut it, you know, used little larger chunks of time, but whatever. One other. Yeah, but all those movies do that, and then like the and then like the last like minute is always like a, like a half hour of movie yeah, time. Yeah. Because they're like doing all kinds of things. Yeah. So one other thing that drove me nuts, and I talked with you about this before I saw Batman a second time. Uh. Uh-huh. When the police officers are assaulting, where Bane's men are camped out, and there's three tanks, and whatever. Bane's men let the police officers get really close, like to within 100 feet before anyone fires a shot. The police are armed with pistols. Bane's people have machine guns. And they let them get super close before even fighting at all. And then it devolves into hand-to-hand combat in like two seconds. Which, okay, I can understand if you get that close, it's going to happen. Which is why if you're a mercenary leader like Bane, you don't let them get that close before you shoot. The thing that bugged me about this the most, I can deal with that. There's three tanks in front of there. Tanks could probably, if you played Grand Theft Auto 1, they could go for a Garanga. You, you could just go the yeah, maybe in the middle he of the want, street. Maybe he wanted the, the it's, chaos. It's true. He likes the chaos. It's completely possible. I mean, that, that's what it was about. I mean, it wasn't yeah. so much like oh, we're going to defeat their army so, you know, as much the, as it's like we're just going to sit this bomb off. He's going to kill himself. So, he didn't, so, so your theory is he didn't really care at that point. Yeah, he was going to kill himself and all those men. The only okay. one that was going to leap was her. So that makes perfect. So that makes sense then. But it, but still. I think you could have a problem with the fact that the plan that Gordon and Batman created was the fact that policemen were going to be like human, you know, targets, yeah. just be a human shield and get shot and die. Seriously, they just they're just but. marching up the street, dude. Like, ow. But as far yeah, as yeah, the, the guys in front are just kind of like, here, we're going to take the bullets and you guys run in. See, this is what I like about this though, about the movie a lot. The relationship between Batman and Alfred, it's not just, I'll serve you forever, Master Wayne. It's not. Like, Alfred is, I think, a little bit more human of a character, which is kind of a shame because he's supposed to be, like, the, like the defining thing in Bat, like, you know, the, the, the rock-solid thing in Batman's life. You know, he's always there for him. But mm-hmm. the fact that he leaves is just such a shock to Wayne, you know? Well, it was like, they were trying to be like, he lost everything. He lost his money. Yep. lost his family. He lost Alfred. He lost Batman. You know, Batman's no more as well. And then it's everything's gone. He took everything. It was, it was awesome. He took everything away from him. And then it's you know rise, and he comes out of the out of the pit. And then he's a, he's a new man, basically. I think that's what they're getting at. I'm a new man. Yeah, yeah, dude, dude. I'm going to beat the shit out of everybody. He talks like that even when everyone knows who he is. Yeah, we talked about that last week. I don't want yeah. to get on it again. But. but no, 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 no. Okay, but other good stuff about the movie. I mean. The action's pretty good. Yeah. The uh, fact that they never call Anne Hathaway Catwoman is pretty funny. And the yeah. only reason it looks like she has cat ears because she has those funky goggles, which is pretty funny to me, too. Right. I think it worked out well. Plus, they had Owen from Torchwood, which was great. And my favorite thing that I didn't realize in like for most of the movie was that the judge for the tribunals was effing Scarecrow. Yeah, so I think they said uh, his name. Yeah, they called him Crane. I didn't catch it. Yeah. I didn't hear it. Uh, and then okay. I saw he had straw sticking out of his shoulder. I'm like, man, this guy looks familiar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I also like the fact that the repercussions from the lie about Dent mm-hmm. really, you know, it wasn't like, oh, we're just going to lie about Dent and everything's going to be hunky-dory forever. That just sets up so much of this movie. Right. Like the fact that that Gordon lied by omission and Batman took the heat for what Dent did. 
just right. set up all this nonsense and terrible things. Yeah, it's way really good, man. It's just way really good. I think it's probably the best movie uh, of the summer, I would say. <clears throat> um, uh, it's tough. I really like The Avengers. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a better film, but I well, think... Well, here's my theory on this. The best movie, I think, was Batman, right? But the best... I'm trying to think of a way to put this. <laughs> it's not going to make any sense. The best adaption was Avengers. I could see that. Sense? I could you see know? that. The best adaptation, the best... The best, adap- the best adaptation was Avengers. That's like per- like almost perfect to the source. Yeah. Material. You know? But Batman, like... And Spider-Man's it's... really good, which there's still like some non-Spider-Man stuff, but it's a really good movie, and the Batman is like the best overall movie, but maybe not 100% uh, based on... Batman. Yeah, yeah, because Batman, there's enough original stuff in there. There's enough changes in there that it's not just like, hey, I'm Batman. You know who I am? Of course you do. You've seen me a million times. There's right. enough in there to keep you like, oh, wow, that's not how I expected it to go. Yeah, it's like Avengers might be the best comic book movie, but Batman's the best movie. Yes. and I Phoenix. Know. I don't know if this makes any sense. And Phoenix Wright is the best video game movie. That is not a real movie. Sick Let's you, continue. buddy. <laughs> A kicks butt. Everyone go buy it. Go watch it. Comes out in on Blu-ray in Japan in August. Sorry, I I had to. Plugging plugging DVDs now. This is it's what a you Blu-ray become. of the best video what, game movie. So far you've fallen. It's the best video game movie ever made. The best. The best. Better than Mortal Kombat One, dude. Right on. Better. Right on. All right, so what do we that got? That is the chick from Happy Gilmore in it. She was Sonya Blade. Wait, that's the Happy. Oh my god! All right, let's come back with uh, Mr. Hazard, and then we'll uh, do some comments, and we'll talk some Schnozman Hole Punch. Schnozman. All right, joining us from YouTube.com/slash I Hazard I, spelt with a three, because he's cool enough to pull it off. That's why. <laughs> Welcome, our show correspondent Hazard has returned to us. Hello. I know. Huzzah. I know. It's How's, there? How's it going, man? Ah, it's going good. Thanks. We need a name for your segment. I just thought of uh, this now. Hazard time. Hazard time. Hazard, hazard mania. I don't know. We'll call this up. <laughs> hazard mania. <laughs> That's good. I quite like that. Ring of hazard. Sure, you trust the the Hulkster. <laughs> yes. Can has. So uh, you haven't joined us on the show in quite some time. Which you are going to be heard a lot more going forward from now on. But uh, how have you been since the last time we spoke with you? Since the last time you were on, what's been going on with you? Um, good. Uh, I believe. I when was the last time we spoke? I think it was April. I think. Something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Time's well, going fast. I think after April it was exam period, and I spent a month of practically, like I I ate books for breakfast and how stuff. How did you do on your on your tests? Oh, I did, I did pretty good. And the year I got just under 70%. That was excellent. Yeah. I, I just missed out on like a first for the year, which is like the highest grade you can get. Oh, wow, excellent. So it, wow. it, was a, it was a bit annoying, but what you do? And you have the show to thank for that, I'm sure. Oh, of course. Stay in Ballsy. <laughs> stay in Ballsy. <laughs> I'm not sure if John meant you have the show to thank for almost making it or the show to thank for not making it. <laughs> Either one. Take your pick. Hmm. How's your uh, how's your skydiving stuff? Last time you were I talked about your, your skydiving adventures. Um, you are a madman that jumps out of planes. Skydiving's going <laughs> doing really good at the moment. No fears, no regard for anything. How's uh, it going? You think I have no fear? You should talk to the people who like make homemade canopies and jump them. What? Wow, what goes with that? Pe- people like make their own uh, rigs, so container that you obviously you put the canopy in and then your own canopy your own lines and then make them all themselves and then jump them to test them and it's well, crazy some people are crazy <laughs> you think i, I like the problems. jump them to test them part is that really a test anymore if you're just jumping with it that's you know? a good point <laughs> like that's not a test like you're just doing it do they have backup parachutes at least yeah they have reserve parachutes but i think they made those themselves too <laughs> that is also a test 
If there's one thing you're not going to DIY, it's going to be a parachute. Thank you. That's right. So I, we were talking off the air uh, before you got on. The Olympics, 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 I can't say this for some reason, Olympics. is going on in your nick of the woods, kind of in your area, not really, but... Yeah, just yeah. about 200 miles away. All right, so you said you saw the Olympic torch. Yeah, um, I go to university in York, um, as I think I've said before, and uh, I think it was the beginning of June uh, during the 70-day Olympic flame uh, marathon, and they were bringing them around, and it just happened it was coming through York at the time when I was in Yorktown Centre. I didn't even realize at the time. I just happened to go there, and they were closing off all the roads and stuff. <laughs> like, what's going on here? So it was going on there. I just noticed the ITV vans and the BBC vans. I was like, oh, of course, it must be Olympics. And there's helicopters flying over and everything. Were people happy crazy. to see the Olympic torch? Were they, were they cheering? Were they throwing oh, garbage? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, happy. I, um, Coke were hand, 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 handing out... Um, these like circular beat pads and at the first i thought they were frisbees um <laughs> and i looked at it it's like it says beat pad and it's like official sponsor of the olympic flame thing uh, so they're so like, sponsor of flame yeah it's like the, even a it flame, like, even it's, a flame it's, has <laughs> it sponsored the um the like the marathon and like give them lots of money and stuff because uh, right. so, like, if there's anything that requires money it's walking from point a to point b <laughs> yeah, they had like uh, big trucks with like playing music and stuff behind the flame and stuff. And it was like a, it was more like a parade, almost, than it was a marathon. Did you join <laughs> in on the parade? Did you march? No, but I did spend most of the day banging my beat drum and shouting Coca Cola. Coca <laughs> Official sponsors of the Olympic Flame. Marathon. Should have put you in a commercial, man. <laughs> I just like, like, commercialized everything. That's Samsung, yeah, yeah. Style, but they weren't as bad. Did yeah. you say Samsung? Yeah, Samsung. Oh man. So uh, you were telling me there's some kind of controversy going on with the Olympics. What, what is this about? Oh yeah, um, well, actually, there's, there's a lot of controversy going on with the Olympics, but specifically, recently, it was when the first couple of days when they're looking at all that like, just swimming with like obviously big names like Michael Phelps and stuff and. Though they had they had a really weird way of giving out tickets to all the events, and that you had to enter a lottery, you had to put your name into a lottery, and then it completely depended on what happened in the lottery, what tickets you got. You didn't get to choose exactly what events. Huh. So oh, oh god! So like you would put your name in, and you could end up with like a ticket to go and see the gymnastics semifinal. And what if you don't even care? Like you get you get like badminton, and you don't even know what that is. That, you have to go to it. That, that was one of the main problems. <laughs> And that's why I didn't do it, because I was afraid I was going to get, like, super expensive tickets to the opening ceremony or something. Then do you yeah. have to it's buy like, them? Yeah, you have to buy them after you... <laughs> oh, so, they, it was wow. weird. They made, they, made everyone, uh, they made everyone aware of... So is this because they feel like maybe people aren't going to go to certain events? So if you buy a random ticket, then like, they could fill all the events, maybe? Yeah, is this what's going on? I think that was something to do with it. I think it was mainly the, the fact that they couldn't... They obviously not... The, the entire country couldn't go and see the, the opening ceremony. There's only so many seats. Okay. So basically they had to say, oh, well, we'd, we'd, we want to provide an Olympic experience for everyone and, provide, and make sure everyone has a chance. The way it well, backfired, though, is that for the less, um, the less popular events, hundreds of empty seats. Hundreds. Because people just were like, I don't want to get a random seat. Well, literally, there would be entire blocks of empty seats, and if it was for the swimming as well. Like, seriously, I used to be a competitive swimmer way back in the day. Uh, Before you decided uh, to jump out of airplanes. Yeah, pretty much, actually. I, that's what I spend all my money on now. Uh, <laughs> but um, I was like, oh, I'd, I'd love to go and see the swimming. And I didn't put my name down because I didn't want to end up with a massively expensive ticket because I couldn't afford to pay for it. And so... Right. I'm looking at this semi-final, Michael Phelps, 200 meter free uh, butterfly, and there's empty seats all over the show, and I'm yeah. just like, that should be that should be uh, sold out. They screwed yeah. up. It's, well, it's, people it's, would have it, loved to see that. Yeah, I would have loved to see that too. But yeah. well, do you feel that a uh, pro wrestling could ever make it to the Olympics? Um, well. Amateur wrestling, maybe. I was thinking about it. Let's listen, listen to my idea here. Uh -oh. <clears throat> the way it would have to work is you'd have to have like two guys from a certain country, and they put on a match, 
and then you'd have judges like judge the matches yeah. that they put on. I think that would work. Yeah, I think that that's would be the only good. way. Right, maybe you even do a promo. Maybe that's part of the score. I don't know. A promo that's part of the score. That's awesome. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. You do not deserve to win a silver medal at the Olympics. <laughs> Uh, the promos would be great at the Olympics. I mean, just going at the, it'd be like all racist stuff going at the different countries and it'd be, it'd be crazy. Be out of control. That's your oh visa. Oh gosh. <clears throat> the puns so I know alone. you wanted to come on. I know you wanted to come on today and talk about a specific topic. I'm not even 100 percent sure what it is. <laughs> um, I have no but, idea. Uh, why don't you take it away and talk to us about something? Okay, so we talk here on the show about. The ballsiest individuals. We are the ballsiest individuals. That's right. Well, I would like to talk about another group of people that I include myself in who are also very ballsy. And what would I tell you? What? what I mean, sorry. What would you tell me if I told you that I like to spend my my uh, ex- spare time watching My Little Pony? I wouldn't know what to say to you, but I would definitely take a few steps away. I have to say that I have several friends who are diehard bronies. I am indeed a brony, and that's what I'd like to talk about, I believe. Oh, boy. <laughs> Wait, you so. believe that's what you'd like to talk about? You're not sure? <laughs> All right, take it away, sir. I'm, like, I'm, I'm interested in this. Maybe you can convert me. So, I, don't, I don't know much about it, so tell me about it. So, it is 2009... And Lauren Faust, who uh, made um, such cartoons as The Powerpuff Girls yeah, and Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Wait, her name's to- Lauren Foster, right? Lauren Faust. Faust. F-A- oh, because it's Foster's Home. Durr. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. And so she goes to Hasbro and wants to make some toy line with a cartoon. I don't know what it's called. I don't really care. But Hasbro instead say, oh, we want you to reboot My Little Pony because they've not had a cartoon for, like, five years. Um, so it definitely takes, deserves to have one. It does. It does. Just wait till you see what was created. Okay, tell so me. They bring in um, Lauren Frost. She does three episodes, takes them to Hasbro. Hasbro loves them. It's created. And this is a show that's aimed at five to 11-year-old little girls. Let's make that very clear. And OJ. Okay, hey. continue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, continue. So, um, have, you, have either of you, oh, uh, have you heard of 4chan? I have heard of it, yes. Yeah, it's an image board. This is, this is where bronies were created. Um, 4chan was where the series was first kind of seen as being good and the way it worked is that people noticed well once someone posted on it there for kind of a joke is like ah look at how ridiculous this is be it see it um so be it that some people would watch it and then be like this is amazing what do you talk about this is the greatest thing ever (laughs) it is amazing i want to say that my Little Pony Friendship is Magic has amazing animation. Really? It has um, great voice acting from the likes of Tara Strong. Who is a frightening uh, individual. Tara Strong is great, though. She's crazy, but aw- awesome, but crazy. <clears throat> uh, you'll know her from uh, voicing people such as uh, Raven from Teen Titans. Mm-hmm. Uh. Or uh, Bubbles from the Powerpuff Girls. Yay! <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Furthermore, these um, My Little Pony. Uh, I've said it has amazing animation. It has amazing storytelling. It's not one-dimensional. Like oh. you, you have most little, you know, most little girls shows are horrible, horribly sickening, sickening <laughs> in how sweet they are. They're just like uh-huh. one-dimensional bull crap. That right. I would not allow my child to watch if I ever were to have one. <laughs> Whereas My Little Pony Friendship and Magic not only has great and useful morals that are told in its stories, um, but also have sub like texts and plots that can appeal to adults too. There are um, 
There are booze jokes. There are uh, really. There are cameos. There is a Big Lebowski cameo in My Little <laughs> Pony: Adventures for Magic. Seriously. Yes. I, I will admit, now most, I, I've watched this show like maybe four times with my friends, usually while drunk, but there was a reference to Escape from L.A., and that shocked me. Mm. There, was a, um, there was a reference to the uh, David Bowie album Diamond Dogs. <laughs> which how it, did this happen? How did this show that's meant for you know, children, like you said, how did it turn out to be of such a high quality? Well, it's yeah. just... Thank, it's just Thanks to Lauren Faust and her amazing team, they just they know how to make good quality cartoons that are appealing to both um, uh, adults and children. It's like children can watch them and be entertained by the good, wholesome storytelling that isn't just crap, the right. sweet rubbish. And adults can watch them and think, "Oh, that's a, it's an interesting story. It's not horrible." It's, there's, there's a freaking um, there's a freaking episode about drinking cider. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's it really is brilliant. That was guest starred Wilford Brimley. Did it indeed? Uh, I did uh, not. Well, know. that would have been awesome, but he's the diabetes guy, so cider, <laughs> sugar, my bad. <laughs> so, uh, bronies are a massive, massive part of. Uh, they, they're known as the cancer of the internet because we kind of post ponies everywhere. Because wow. we love My Little Pony so much. <laughs> Um, oh, Jay, what do you have to say about this show? You don't, you don't watch this? I don't watch it on my own. If my friends like are over and they want to... What? Why don't, why don't, it seems like something you would be into. Why don't you get, get into it? Because some of the characters annoy me so much, I want to gouge out their eyes with a spoon. I usually watch the show with my friends while drunk, if I'm going to <laughs> watch it. What characters out of interest? Pinkie Pie <laughs> makes me punch myself in the face. Ah, oh, but Pinkie Pie likes to party. <laughs> <laughs> She's up being insane. I'm using that sound. I'm gonna use that sound bite forever, dude. Some cupcakes and cakes and. I'm taking that sound bite from you. I'm using that. <laughs> Pinkie Pie likes to party. <laughs> so good. Oh my gosh! I don't know. I just one of my friends is so obsessed with Pinkie Pie that I I I, hmm. I don't even know anymore, dude. Like, let me put it this way. Okay, my friends came over to my house, and they said, "Hey, can I borrow your printer?" He goes online. He prints out. A list of My Little Pony themed drinks. It's <laughs> amazing. Well, I will tell you that the Pinkie Pie has absinthe, control, like gin, rum, whatever. The thing will kill you. It's delicious, <laughs> but it will kill you. Uh, so I'm, I'm taking you tried this this drink. Uh, He's done it. Yeah, I, we're yeah, it right I, now. What you're talking about. <laughs> He's got one in his hand right now. No, I, I though I did have a. Never mind. But um. I don't know. It's it's okay. It's an okay show. I prefer the Powerpuff Girls, quite frankly. But I mean, I'm not gonna knock on it too badly. But one thing I think, though, it's possible the show appeals so much to adults because who are the people who get stuck watching whatever show the kids are watching? The parents. Yeah. Maybe they thought, let's make something that the parents are going to want on the TV screen. So that's there's a lot of good only... stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot of stuff like that now. A lot of these shows, they try to, they realize the parents are in the room and they have to deal with it. Yeah. So they try to, like Phineas and Ferb, I think is a decent show. I don't know if you guys have that. I haven't seen it, no. I've, not, like, I've watched like a few episodes. Yeah, yeah, I like That's that. the thing, like, the parents could be in there watching and if, if you like the show, you are going to be so much more inclined to buy something for the kids. Right. My friends hunt down the random My Little Pony action figures that, like, that come in, you know, in the random bags. They went online and found out how you can tell which mystery pony is inside the bag by reading a serial number. <laughs> they went That's to the amazing. stores. They're like, no, nah, I got this one. Got this one. Ooh, this one's crystal. All right, this is what I'm going to do. I have before me right now, I have a list of 1980s characters from girls' cartoons. I'm going to read off the list to you. You guys are going to decide if they should perhaps now remake one of these shows. Okay? Uh, well, can we have a – here's a question for you, though. Yeah. Can we specify whether whether we can just ban them from remaking it with CG? Because some shows are just would not. Well, well, Never mind. Whatever. Continue. We're getting too specific here. <sighs> I guess you could say if they should make it or not. If if you feel that they should make it, you could say what kind of thing it should be. Okay. Like, how about well, that? Is that a nice compromise? Yeah, sure. Okay. Has you on board with this? Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. All right. You good with this? Okay. So the first one we have Shira of Shira, Princess of Power. 
It was kind of like a, a, a knockoff He-Man. I think she was like his cousin or something. I don't know. <laughs> his cousin. It was like his cousin or I don't know, something like that. It was, it was a spin-off of He-Man. <laughs> Second what about this show? Removed. Should they make this show now? I've never even heard of it, so I would not have any idea. You're, like, you're a lot younger than us, so you don't, you don't know this one. If it increases, okay, this is all about you. You used it, to watch this. If it increases the chances of them making a good He-Man cartoon, by all means, go for it. Are you just saying that, or do you just want to see Shira? I honestly remember very little about Shira except that. Look, I had an older sister. I, we just watched He-Man. <laughs> I don't really know what I was trying to make a point of with that, but I don't. What kind, of, a, what kind of a show should they make? Should it be like a porno? What should it be? <laughs> Talk about is, violating an my porn? childhood. An animated porn. Okay, what just says animated porn for Shira? What? <laughs> About uh, Rainbow Bright. You remember this one? Yes, re- vaguely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, they made a really sweet music video to uh, Feel Good Inc. by the Gorillas with this show. It was amazing. Robot Chicken, Robot Chicken has a lot of stuff with these characters. Oh, yeah, dude, their Care Bear skit was hilarious. Pretty much brought them all back, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'd say go for it, but I don't want to see it in CG. This is the one okay. I was thinking of, because I could swear they made a Rainbow Bright in CG. And it was just right in the uncanny valley, like super creepy. You used to about, see the creepy things, aren't you? You have no yes, idea. <laughs> How about a strawberry shortcake? <laughs> they already have remade strawberry shortcake. That they might did? be the one I was thinking of. What yeah, happened? It's on, it's on the hub. It's on the same channel as My Little Pony French was Magic. It's not as good, though. And I, I, no, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just well, I'm I just like my little pony. As in, you're just totally numb to this whole list. You're like I don't care. I just want to see the ponies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm I'm currently wearing a t-shirt that says "Every pony equal, every pony loved." Okay. Is that one true? Thing, yeah, he's probably telling the truth. That that is a shirt that exists. I'm pretty sure. Oh wow. There is one thing I have to say though that bugs me the heck out of me out of that show. You could say everybody sometimes. Ponies have bodies, so you can say everybody. No, 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 no. It's every pony. Every pony. Yeah, it's more polite. I agree I with this. The pony, every pony should know. Uh, would be about, them uh, to speak differently. OJ, how about uh, Penny from Inspector Gadget? Should she have her own show? Being that she was the brains behind the operation. No, Brain was the, the brains inspector, behind the operation. The inspector was more of a failure, complete failure. But, dude, that was... Not, how did he get on the force in the first place is what I want to know. He was probably fine till he got in that accident. It destroyed his body and they had to yes. implant him with things. Yeah, dude, do you think that rotor cuff, that helicopter in his hat gives him enough room for brains? The crazy thing about him is they put like millions of dollars of technology inside of an idiot. <laughs> well, maybe the technology turned him into an idiot. I don't yeah, think so. The well, then, he could, then he's a lawsuit on his hands. That's a whole other story. But he's too dumb to realize it. <laughs> and he probably just hangs around to get enough proof so they can have a civil suit and make bank. Well, I guess at the end of the day, he solves all the cases, so. Yeah, he's not that bad. I just want his effing car, man. That thing's got, like, a pocket dimension or something. I'm out of, I'm out of characters. Has you got anything? You got any other uh, cartoons you'd like to see come back? Cartoons that I'd like to see come back. I did used to watch one uh, cartoon on Fox Kids called yeah. Heavy Gear. And it was like, um, what the fuck is going on here? Uh, no, uh, I used to watch one. No, sorry, my, uh, something popped up on my screen. Whatever. Uh, I did used to watch one uh, cartoon on Fox Kids, and it was kind of like a Western mech uh, cartoon. Wow. It's about the like a, It was almost like the two teams, and they like fought in mechs and competed in like a uh, almost like quests to get certain stuff. And it was oh, all huh. like a big televised event, and that's the, that was the theme of the show. It was really cool. It was really entertaining. Let's bring uh, that back. Yeah, I'd really like to see. It's called Heavy Gear. I, I'd watch that. Heck, I'd watch Reboot. That was awesome. Oh, Reboot was amazing. I <laughs> love Reboot. Hexadecimal. Oh yeah. I am Megabyte. Mm. <laughs> it always used to entertain me when I would, I would be sitting in my uh, computing class, and they would be like, and this is what Hexadecimal is. And I was like, oh, yeah, off the, off the Reboot. Yeah. <laughs> Look, sit down. Who sit down? <laughs> Harrison, what are you doing? Don't say my real name. <laughs> no? I'm Batman. Okay, I can edit that out. Don't worry about it. All right, sir. I, uh, we got to get going. We got a bunch of stuff to uh, get through. But I want to thank you for coming in. 
Anytime you want to come back and let us know, we'll get you back in here. You're now our show correspondent. Oh, I'm going to go the first one. <laughs> I don't that was a heck of a surprise, sir. Yeah. I, I don't actually care about the name, you know? I was just joking. Okay. <laughs> well, we think how about this. You send me a link to one of the, 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 the My Little Pony shows. I will you want him out. to send you a link to a pony show. <laughs> yes. To a pony show, yes. Yes. I love donkey shows. I love pony shows. Just Ponies. give him a link to Clerks too. Uh, just, uh, just to say to anyone who's watching this, Google spot YouTube search cupcakes, and I will give you nightmares for the next three years. I have a question for you, sir. <laughs> Do you um like bananas? I certainly like bananas. Well, you're about to go bananas on the moon. <laughs> All right, that's enough of this. That's so weird. <laughs> How's it? We thank you, sir. We'll talk to you Google soon. It. See you, man. Oh, Google that thank video. You. Thank you. Thanks for staying up late with us. We appreciate it. One sixteen a.m. Wow, look at this guy's a trooper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. We'll talk to you next time. See you later. Good night. All right, it was a pleasure to talk to Haz. I did not see that topic of conversation coming at all. <laughs> I you enjoyed it. I, it loved. was it was fun. It was fun. Don't get me wrong. I was just completely surprised. All right, so uh, I don't have a lot of time to work with here. Let's uh, let's run. Th it's in some comments right now. Super speed okay. comment mode engaged. Take it away, sir. This one's from Juggernaut one four five seven eight. Ramborsha Chanter poem. I forgot what these types of things are called. Parentheses make OJ sing it. Unparentheses. First of all, you don't make me do anything. Second of all, I would love to sing it. You really want me to sing it? <laughs> we are the Ramborsha. Okay, that sounds awful. We are the Ramborsha. We are gathered here today. We like to stay ballsy. Life is better this way. If you don't, who are leaders, then you are just a maggot. There are tales of our leaders who challenged that coward Bob Saget. Oh, how cool leaders we get, Mr. Rambo and OJ. We get to hear your voices every Thursday. Well done. Thank you. It's very Juggernaut nice. Juggernaut 14578. What's that, a creed right there? I think that's, yeah. I think that's an old school Ramborgia creed, which we haven't uh, done in a long time. It's Bring it back. Since you've had one of those. Our boy Charles Mooney's been going insane on Bob Saget. He's now brought other people into it. <laughs> um, Stamos, Coulier, Shaq was involved. Is he hitting all of them on Twitter? Chris Angel, and uh, he's been going at him like big time. I don't know what happened with oh that. Oh my gosh, that guy's gonna. That guy's just gonna be. Just, he's gonna call us on Skype one day. He's gonna be like, <laughs> "You have time for me in your podcast today." He's gonna mind freak you. I hope he uses a brain condom. Well, this is that a control. I'm like, I can't wait until one of these people actually responds to him. It's going to happen eventually because he's just, he's just driving them insane. All right, let's continue here. All right. Um, John, are we saying the names for all these? Yes. This one's from iCash1229. Hey, John and OJ. This past week, I was dumped by my girlfriend of nine months, and she left me for a guy who does drugs. It makes me sad because she believes that, that he'll quit for her. The more I think of it, it makes me sad. I thought we really had something, but I know she'll never take me back anyways. I just need some advice from someone because you guys are good at it, and I want to know how to move on. I also apologize for not staying ballsy through this situation, but if you read this, it would mean a lot to me. We're abortion for life. Oh. It's tough, man. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of chicks like uh, have this mentality. like They, they find these... Uh, Let's call them uh, pathetic individuals. Is that a, a nice word to use? Uh, maybe. And they think that they can like repair them, or they could change them, and that they're going to become like you know what they want them to be. And and they're you know it's like a it's almost like a motherly type of thing that that comes out. Like I'm going to take care of this one, and he needs me. I will nurse and, this uh, wounded bird back to the. And light. I will yes, and he will be the perfect man for me after I'm done with him, and you know, and usually it's not the case. And I think you know. She's gonna. She's obviously made a, a poor choice, seeing that you you're, you're not you know this type of person. It's and uh, it's, what happens is when you when you put so much energy into trying to fix another person, you kind of you you yourself kind of gets neglected. Yep. yep. And your needs are not taken care of, and then and she's probably not gonna be too happy when you know after a while. And it's tough. 
Yes. I mean, at this point, you, I mean, you, you can't afford, well, at this point, I mean, you can't really afford to drive yourself nuts over this girl because, you know what? This is a sign of your own strength. She went for somebody that she can fix. Dude, you're not broken, man. <laughs> like, you're fine. Like, she yeah, she wants, may actually, you know, she's gonna look. She's gonna remember that eventually. She, yeah, dude. Like, she's going after this guy because he's obviously got problems, and she thinks that she will be the white knight to swoop, swoop in, grab him up onto her pale steed, and then ride off into the glorious, you know, withdraw, withdrawal sunset. But that's, you know, that might not. It's probably not going to happen that way, and they're both going to end up getting hurt. And you, you're here, like. She, she couldn't fix you. You are fine, man. Again, right. like she wants somebody that she can mold and shape and turn from. She, maybe she thinks that if he's this bad guy in a bad way, well, when he's not in a bad way anymore, he'll be exactly what she turns him into. That's not how <clears> people <throat> work, though. Yeah, I think that, you know, going forward, if you really want her back, I always feel like there is, a, there is always a possibility. I would never say. You know, I, you know, there's no way she'll take me back or we'll ever be together again. I, I don't ever believe that. I think if you want something, uh, you can make it happen. But at the same time, if you choose not to pursue it, perhaps you dodge the bullet, you know. It's Maybe quite someone likely. out there that's going to appreciate you for who you are and, uh, you know, is he going to leave you for uh, someone that's not as good as you, you know. So. You want someone who sees you as a person and not a project. Ah, well done. Thank you. All right. Hope that was helpful. Yeah. Um, and dude, don't worry about staying ballsy. We know you can. We know. We know you're doing it. We know you can do it. Just don't freak yourself out over it. You're you're, you're fine, man. Yeah. Our next comment is from semi inept. Semi inept. That is a clever name. Semi inept. Very nice. Just like I am at reading. <laughs> hey, Ramborsians, you guys are the favored slash. Recognize chapter, but the Rambaholics are still thriving. I like how you read that. It was very good. Thank you. I can't really do that as well as you. That's because I don't Ups have a voice of my own. That upsets me. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 we haven't heard from the Rambaholics in a long time. We haven't forgotten about makes, you guys. That kind of makes me afraid because I don't know what they're doing. They've gone rogue. I have no control over them anymore. <laughs> they're somewhere out there, and the, the fact that they're quiet... Some people think that's a good sign. Perhaps they're finished. But no, it makes me worried that they're just planning something. Eventually, they will, they will be quiet, they'll make us forget about them, and then they will explode. They're a team of mavericks like on the loose, man. They're out there somewhere, and I, I'm upset. We have to try to appease them and bring them back into the fold. Well, uh, 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 for, they left the fold? I mean, just because they're quiet doesn't mean we don't love they're them. They're rogue. They're rogues. My gosh, they're going to steal our powers? Canoodling with Saget. <gasps> that is the rumors that I hear. No, my, no, 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 no. Perhaps they have turned and they have joined Saget. No, no, no. Right, let's continue with these comments. Okay. This next comment comes from Green and Gold 115. Hey, John and John. I find myself in kind of a messy situation at the moment. You see, there's this girl I have a big crush on. We see each other quite frequently, and we always flirt. The only problem is she already has a boyfriend. We've gone on a couple dates already, and held hands and even kissed. I really want to be with her, but I don't want to be her side action, and I also don't want to be the Richard and break up their relationship. Thanks for the consideration. Let's see. A couple dates we've never held hands and kissed. We've held hands and even kissed. I don't want to be with her. I don't want your side action. Yeah. So she has a boyfriend? Is that what I'm seeing here? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta tell her, uh, to make a choice. And, you know, you're not doing any, by the way, uh, he seems like he's, like, uh, feels bad about what's going on, but he's not the one doing anything wrong. You know, you're not the one in a relationship. That's her. You know, she's the one that makes decisions. You can't, uh, it's not really like you're controlling her or influencing her to do things that she's not supposed to be doing, you know? Yeah. You're, you're adults. You know, she's, 
choosing to do these things. So she, you shouldn't feel bad about that. And if you have feelings for her, then you shouldn't feel bad about pursuing those feelings. Yeah, I think yeah, I think it's okay. Um, but she's the one that's you know kind of being uh, in the wrong. She because she's first of all she's kind of doing things behind this other guy's back, and she's in a way leading you on. So she has to figure out what she wants to do. So I would, I think he's he's in pain right here. Yes. You know, because he, he doesn't know what to, what to do, and I don't want to be the side action, all that. Um, you're going to have to tell her to, uh, you know, tell her how you feel, obviously. Don't do it in a mean way. So, you know, I really like you, and I think we have something uh, that, that's meaningful. I would like you to leave him and be with me. Yeah, you know? so... If she can't do that, well, that's not right. She's just trying to get attention from two people, and that's not, that's not the right way to go about things. Yeah, I agree with John. Like, what you need to do is... You need to tell her how how you feel. I mean, I, I think that you recognize that this isn't necessarily that this isn't really a great situation you're in for either of you. I mean, it's, it's certainly far from ideal. You don't want to be the other guy in this sort of this sort of situation. It's not fair to you, her, or him. But one thing I, I think that what you really need to do is tell her how you feel. You know, and I, don't make it come off as an ultimatum, even though it kind of is. You don't want to be like. It's him or me, bro. But it's pretty have, much got to be that way, though. Well, you got. Well, you got to let me finish. Yeah. Yeah, but you really just need to, you know, don't be conf- super confrontational about it. But you got to let her know that it's not fair to him, it's not fair to you, and it's not fair to me. We. I'm sure can't, she's. I'm sure it's confusing for her as well. Yeah, exactly. That's why you can't be like, you know, really ragey about it. Yeah. But you got to tell her, and if there's one thing that I can tell you, sir, hopefully she's better than this. But if she'll date you on the side of someone else, there's a, it's not far from the realm of possibility that she'll date someone else on the side when she's dating you. Um, yeah, but I don't think it's 100%. It's not 100%, um, but just don't freak out about it and think, oh my gosh, is she cheating on me all the time? But... There are some times where that has happened to people. I'll, I'll leave it you know, at that. Some experience. I have experience with a very, very similar situation. Well, I'll say this: I've had I had an opposite experience to you with a similar situation. So, I think sometimes these things happen. It seems like all parties involved are not in a good place right now. Yes. You gotta try to move everyone to a good place. Yes, that's the key. And uh, again, I wouldn't beat yourself up or feel bad about exactly. it. Exactly. That you're just pursuing your feelings. Exactly. That's all anyone can ever hope to do. And I'm not saying don't pursue your feelings, but just warning. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Learn just from others. Tell her how it is. Exactly. Tell her how things are. That's all I can do. And if she says that she can't, you know, commit fully to one dude. Then you've got your answer, I guess. Yes. All right, OJ, it has begun. Sup? You will now go deep into the bells. Schnoz man, whole punch, the Justice League, episode number five. Hey. Before we get into it, do you want to? Do you have anything general in general to say about the episode? That this was a very hard episode to make. Yeah, it was difficult. Um, it was definitely the hardest one. Even though we didn't have that many people in it besides ourselves, we had a few. A bunch. Actually, there were a bunch of us. There was a lot of people, but yeah. This, this episode, I mean, it's. It had the most people it's, with speaking roles that we ever did. Yeah. It was tough. It was a lot of work. It wasn't even tough because of the actual like, filming. It was just outside things made it tough. Scheduling. Like, first of all, it's, in the middle, it's the summer, so it's like 100 degrees out. And we got you running around with the suit. And, and now we got a, a different suit, which is made from actually a uh, tablecloth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the tablecloth from the party episode, which I don't know if people caught. On and then, um, you know, my car is in bad shape, and I had to come down. You live an hour away, and I had to get try to get there. Yeah, without blowing up your car. Four or five times in the you know, two-week span. And then we also had several locations, which we didn't even know up until, like, the last minutes of, like, where who was going to do this stuff or where it was going to be. And yep. And we'll talk about that as we get get into it. Well, it was, it was a lot of outside stuff, and then and again, it was the longest one, so it was just the most footage. Yeah, know. I mean, well, John spent a, a ton of time 
going over the script, making sure everything was right. I mean, we reviewed it several times, like we recorded the monologues a bunch of times. Yeah, let's like, say this, like people don't realize, you know, it's not like you just throw it together. Like every word and everything said is scrutinized heavily. And the reason for that is, is like this, the way the story's constructed, like it, it all has to make sense. And, and pretty much most of what is said, like you might think things are just, oh, that's just a little thing or that's just thrown in there or that's just something in the background, whatever. Most things that go on lead to something else or have symbolic meaning for something else in the future, you know? Yeah, it's all connected. It's all connected. So a lot of it, a lot of it's like, okay, this can't be like this. This is has, this has to be like this sets this up later on, you know. So it's a lot of like just going through the the writing of it uh, takes a long time. And yeah, and now we're getting like you know really uh, uptight about how we film. Where in the past it was just kind of like we uh, just filming. Let it, let it rip for ten minutes. Just talk. But now we're like, all right. Yeah, episode one, dude. We did we improv like, take, 50, like take forty-three. <laughs> Yeah, episode one, dude, we improv like half of the couch scene. Yeah. Oh, that was like, yeah, we just let, let it go, you know. We'll, we'll just fix it during editing, right? But now it's like everything we do is like, it has to be the best we could possibly put out, you know. People are going to watch this. It has to be the very yeah. best, like nothing ever was. It has to be the be- very best we can we could possibly put out. And I think, all in all, I think I don't think we could have done much better than what um, – for this episode than we got. I am more than satisfied with this episode. This episode is a work of effing art. Yeah, if you look at the equipment we have and the amount of time we have to work on this. Um, the and self-destructing the of, the, equipment. The, the budget that we have. I what mean, budget? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things going against us. And, we, and I think it came out really well. Yeah, and I can yeah the equipment, a lot of equipment breakdowns. Man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Even in this episode, there's some stuff that's like, oh, man, it's just a, just equipment problem. Yeah. And, well, not to mention that when half of your production team is pretty much only available on weekends. I mean, I came down for a few weeks for like a couple weekdays to film like the plane trade scene and the bank scene. But I'm almost exclusively only around on weekends. Half of the team, which is one person because the other person's me. <laughs> it's not a team. It's, too, it's a duo. It's still a team. Still a team, yes, that's true. Army of two, man. But I will say, uh, you know, it was still really rewarding when it came out, and the reception's been really good. And the editing that John did was. I'm you know, proud of it. I mean, I, I would show this to anybody. Like, I made this, and well, um, dude, I definitely hang my hat on it. You know. Well, if it weren't attached to your head, but dude, the thing <laughs> is, like, what happened? Like, some of the cuts, we just somehow instinctively, or accidentally, or magically. Did some the beginnings of some sentences and the endings of others on some cuts with the same exact like hand motions and stuff, mm-hmm. and, and it just like and so well, that's what together, I, I learned. You know, it's like do the same thing every time. <laughs> like if at the if like if in the wide shot when you said this, you brought your hand towards your face. Yeah. For the next line, have your hand near your face or coming away from your face. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, we just learned like the, you know every one we do is a culmination of like what we've learned from the previous one yeah the previous ones so I think a lot of people are like every time you point out like oh this is better this is better this is better yeah it's also it's also a struggle sometimes too like sometimes I'm just dead in the middle of the day and I'm just like yeah you, uh, it's kind of hard to sometimes you got to try to keep you motivated and I understand like you know it's, it gets tiring and well, all that there's basically i end up pulling seven day well seven day weeks sometimes like we yeah. work friday and saturday for like five or six hours i'm yeah. just like hey i are <laughs> i already oh, basically, we definitely destroyed ourselves i mean oh yeah we beat well then and then you go home and edit like for, for like 10 years straight i'm like dude yeah. it's okay sleep sleep <laughs> john sleep yeah it was tough i had to say it was definitely a challenge but let's go through it a little bit. I don't want to. Alright, you want me to open it up? Like, yeah, open it up. All right. I don't want to just keep rambling about it. All right, give me a second. I don't have the file immediately open. Just go to the channels right on the front page. But that's a good idea. <laughs> are you gonna watch the actual uh, raw footage? Yeah. Or if, by the way, I didn't get to see this. You never saw it on the YouTube channel? No. Well, not on the channel. No. What I ended up like, I was off to. Um, Otacon, no like, way. the day after John finished it. So John ended uh-huh. up sending me the file that morning. Like, I woke up, I think, at 7 or 8 a.m. Yeah. 
just to watch this. Well, I was talking about it last week on the show, how why, why you weren't on the show last week because you were supposed to film in the morning. Yeah. And then I was like, dude, you got to do this and that. You got to film a door. You got to like get, get all these different shots just to finish this off. <laughs> and you were uh, able to uh, get on the show with me. Do you yeah. have it open yet? Yeah, it's open. But uh, one thing okay. I wanted to say was um, I, I copied it over to my media player and watched it on the train on the way to Baltimore. Mm-hmm. That was the way I got to watch it. So I got it open. So let me know when you want it to roll. Um, well, I'm just going to you know, obviously stop it a lot, so I don't think it really matters. But I'm playing it now. <laughs> so you see our intro there. There's our logo, Mark 2 bit. It's always like a different color for each episode. This one got the pink one, which I thought was pretty nice. Pink and white, you know? That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty. So uh, all these all these earlier episodes, you see all these, uh, you know, we like to show the chain stores and all these different stores. And now in the beginning of this one, you see the, the places that are out of business. Yeah. There seems to be more and more of these, uh, you know, as we, as we go forward here. Borders Bookstore. Pretty much every town has a closed one of those. Yeah. And then uh, we got a hole punch. Pulling down his sign. That's from the last episode, obviously. We're spelled hole, hole punch. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I got a kick out of that. Like, you were supposed to think, oh, he went to the store and they spelled it wrong. Yeah. But I made the sign myself. So last week I talked about how, uh, I said, how, uh, Howard was here. I'm like, Howard, you're in the episode. And he's like, what are you talking about? I was like, you're in a flashback. And a few people were like, saw the episode, like, where's Howard's flashback? Well, it's, it's in this opening, like, 40 seconds here. When you, when you get with the, um, the promising young man. Yeah. A.K.A. the hobo is struck with the hole plunge. I like that yeah. line, though. He's like, I struck a promising young man with the hole plunge. And he's like, a, it's like a hobo. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, really? He's a promising man? But it, yeah, Howard, that's where Howard was in that uh, little black and white part right there. And then a uh, hole punch throwing out the sign. And uh, I didn't really see too many people comment about this. I was kind of bummed out because I like how basically the storyline is the last episode you saw Hole Punch throw all his costume on the fl- on the street. Yeah. No, no. And really- now he has no costume, but he has to go back out. He realizes so, he is Hole Punch once more. He's Hole Punch once more, but now he has no suit. So he builds a suit from a tablecloth. Which he which had was, left over from the party. Which was from the party. Yeah, that was the same table and, the, and everything. Um and he cuts a piece of the, of the tablecloth, and he starts making the suit out of uh, all these random things. And I thought that was pretty funny, but I didn't really, I didn't really see much reaction to that. Yeah, nobody seemed to give. But it I don't know. If, I don't know if necessarily they were just other stuff overshadow it. Maybe I don't know. It's possible. Yeah, you know, you Let's can't. Go with uh, that. <laughs> maybe they just didn't care. Or like whatever. But uh, oh, this is pretty cool. This is actually uh, you actually built the whole thing legit, as I filmed you for like ten minutes. Yeah, I mean, I and then had. I just cut, and I just cut pieces of um, of you doing it into, you know, fit it into like a twenty second thing. Now the super mega secret is that there's actually two masks, because I'd already built one earlier. Yeah, yeah. So. But you did, you did, you legit built that you know built that there. Yeah, I and built another one. I mean. Yeah, you had a secondary one. Yeah, so we actually do kind of have a spare, but. I like I, that the white out, and it's like you know, it bums me out. People don't notice, but it's because it's like. I remember we, we were filming this, and I was like, we need a whiteout scene. And we did it like a week later. I came down just to do that. <laughs> yeah. Because we didn't have whiteout at the time, you know. Like, we were a little hard on this shit, you know. Yeah, I know. And people were just like, meh. We put a lot, yeah, there's a lot of detail, man. And I like the meh. glue. And then you, uh, he basically made the whole punch logo out of a cardboard box and then painted it with whiteout. Yeah. And then threw on it and with a barker. <laughs> I, thought it was, I thought it was funny stuff, man. I liked it. His montages are always challenging because it's a certain amount of time to fit a certain amount of things. You know, and you, and you try to tell a story with the visual, you know? You it's not just like, oh, here's a bunch of footage. Like you're telling a story that someone has to try to look at and understand what's happening. So, you know, you see him take the one piece of something and then glue it and then another piece and then attach it and stuff. So, Like, you, it's, it's, tra- it's showing you how it was built. It's showing you, like, how he's... Well, you could go all metaphorical crazy on it and be like, oh, it's how he's becoming his own self again. Yeah, but he's not... He's rebuilding he's not, himself. He's not, he's not 100% himself. Because exactly. He has, like, it's symbolic because it's like, he's back, but he's, is he really back? You know, he's building this... Bogus suit. Because suit. he feels like he has to go save things, but he's mentally, he's obviously not correct, you know, where he's he wants quite, to be. 
right in the head right now. Exactly. And then uh, we'll talk with Shinaz, man, which I thought was good. And he tells him, Hole Punch tells him, you know, yesterday I told you that uh, you could stay here because that was from the previous episode where you mocked him. And he's like, you know, you, you, you don't have to, have to pay me anymore. I'll be moving out of here. Don't you worry about paying me that rent. So now Hole Punch is like, I told you you didn't have to pay rent. And I'm a man of my word. And I, even though I said that in jest, uh, you know, that's why I'm, I'm, if I could pay the rent, then you could stay here. And that's kind of like the beginning of the, I guess, the softening of Schnoz Man, I guess. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or were, which is kind of like extending the olive branch to him, you know? Perhaps. 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 He's trying at the very and, least. You know, this scene wasn't too bad. This scene wasn't too bad to do. No, I mean, we had our lines. Oh, yeah, it was like me walking out. We did that a bunch of times. We didn't know yeah. how, to, how we wanted to do that. And I think the mask makes it look like I'm staring at the floor. Because I tried to make it lopsided and terrible looking. Yeah. It looks funny, though. It looks like he has a, like a trash bag and a, and the mask is just awful. I thought it was really good. It's nice to know I'm good at making things look bad. Yeah, I mean, that was the, that was the point. It's just to look horrible, you know? Yes. And I... The, the hardest part for me um, was when we, when we were walking around, I'm supposed to make it look like I'm tripping over this cape. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. Hold on. We're, we're, uh, so we're at the lines like, you're you know, a little lunatic. <laughs> Which of those cool. Yeah, it's showing that Schnoz Man's like, this guy and this is... is you coming out, when you come out of your house here, a whole bunch comes out of his house, we did this, we were outside for like, it was like 95 degrees, right? I'm dying. It was like so hot, right? And we did this, like, for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, like, several different uh, takes of it and different w angles and stuff. And I'm, like, go inside the house, and I'm, like, dude, I can see your address blatantly in the in the video. Yeah. <laughs> so then we had to go back out, and we taped up. There's a sign to the right, which we put tape yeah, all over. Yeah, you can see it. I taped that thing to pieces, man. And we had to go back out and do it again. And I'm just, like, uh... Well, I was just talking about tripping over the cape where... He, he doesn't understand that you don't actually have to trip on the cape. You just pretend you're tripping on the cape. Dude, it looks so think, wrong. He tends to think that you actually have to trip on it, which I don't understand. I'm like, no, no, you got to make it look realistic. And, you, dude, the wind was blowing the cape away from my feet in nearly every scene. So, basically, I'd have to, like, completely fake tripping on the cape. Like, it was really hard. Yeah, but sometimes, like, you know, your feet aren't even shown. I mean, it's just, I don't know. You did a good job. Well... I had good direction, but still, it was not. Yeah, we, do, easy. we do still have a lot. I mean, you know, it's just how it is. But I thought that was a nice shot with the sky there. That's yeah, pretty nice. It was. It was pretty out, man. I mean, I and, was uh, dying and sweating to death because that thing didn't nothing breathe at all. But it was and the song that I, uh, the song that I played for this specific part, was probably the most difficult thing, uh, music-wise, for all the out of all the episodes because it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of picking, man. It was, it's intense. So I hope to do a video of, of me doing that soon. One other thing I like, though, is when I'm walking around and I'm going, you know, through the street, the guy turns around. Yeah, that was great. He's like, w w what? So, like, that wasn't even the best take of this, but the fact that that dude was there, I just, that's why I used it. That dude was, it was brilliant. He was a little out of it, but he just looks, he's like, what the hell's going on? Like, he <laughs> it first. He's like, huh? Yeah, that was great. And then uh, this is... uh. Union Savings Bank, it's in uh, Danbury. And we got a really, that was like probably the, through the shot out we ever did, right? Have like a, a sky and all that. That's yeah, pretty nice. it was pretty, it was just a gorgeous day aside from wearing crazy clothes. Now the one that I really liked, we actually filmed at another bank as well, which was, uh, what bank was that? Webster? No, Wells Fargo. Yeah. And we're, we're outside this Wells Fargo, and OG does this cool thing where he like looks at the door and he like looks at the ground, and he's like, you know, think, th like nervous about going in, and he slowly walks. And I think you actually like went inside, right? Or you I was about to go door? inside, or I tried to open one of the doors. All right, so yeah, we like it was pretty cool, you know. But then, then when we got the the actual banker stuff, and you know that was filmed like a, a couple floors up, right? It was like yeah. a fifth floor apartment or something. Yeah. So I'm like, there's no way that this is that bank because that bank was like a one. It looks so small. So I was like, there's no way that that people are going to believe that you're actually inside this building. So we had to, we wound up using this uh, Union Savings Bank that, yeah, which isn't fine though. That does look pretty cool. It's still all right. The monologue had some good stuff in it, which I didn't really see people catch. 
Um, I like how he basically sets up that the cape is too long. Yes. He's like, well, the cape is too long, but it would be completely ridiculous not to have a cape. Yeah, like this is. That was funny. Like he 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 can't can't imagine going outside without his cape on. He's like, that'd be completely insane not to have a cape, but I have one, even though it's too long. And then he's like, well, I don't have my whole plunge with me because I don't want to press anyone, or I don't want to shock anyone with my impressive tool. Yeah, my impressive sucking tool. Which was your line, which I thought was pretty funny. Yeah, no one really, no one really picked up on it. I guess they don't like my impressive sucking tool. There's a lot of stuff. I, I mean, there's so much stuff in it. I think it kind of like you know it was lost. Sometimes. I don't worry about it, man. And then we got the thing when uh, Schnozman's in the bathroom. He's doing his business. Yeah, that was a little awkward to film. I'm like, you don't look like you're actually sitting on the toilet. What? It kind of does, doesn't it? No, no. At first, I'm like, yeah, dude, you have to move around a little bit. He's like, oh, eh. uh, yeah, you're like, you have to move like you're doing. I'm like, what are you? And then uh, the lights go out. You like the sound that I used for that? That was, pretty good. that was pretty good. Yeah. It was a sound that I found online, but it was like a lot shorter, so I had to stretch. Uh, I should like, slow it down. Yeah. And then everyone's favorite, Moose in the MILF. Moose in the MILF is the biggest thing, and that's something I came up with, like, you know, as we're about to film, like, what should we call it? I was like, Moose in the MILF. Then I think you wrote Moose and the MILF. That's what I thought you said. And I'm like, no, moose in the milf. Like it <laughs> had like, to be right? perfect. You're like, okay. <laughs> That's like, pretty funny. When you it know? comes to moose and milfs, you can't go halfway. I hope no one uh, actually searched for that. Someone jokingly made it seem like they did. I hope not. Someone's like, man, that file size is a lot smaller than when I downloaded it. So while you talk about the banker situation, we... Uh, he had this banker scene. It'd be funny if he actually goes into a bank and talks to someone, like this real straight-laced individual with like his crazy suit on, you know? Yeah. And uh, I think like this was like last minute because we, we our last day to film was like that weekend, and then like on a, it was like a Thursday night. You're like, oh, this, this dude's let this dude at his house or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Come down. So why don't you talk about this a little bit? All right. So this is my friend Amit, who uh, I work with him. He's a pretty cool guy. He's not an actor. No, well, though, uh, though apparently one of his friends in college was a film student, so he's had some practice doing doing stuff for her. Okay. But uh, yeah, so I mentioned it. I'm like, yeah, because originally one of my friend, other friends from work, was like, yeah, dude, um, I'm taking a half day on Thursday. I could probably uh, do the scene, but we didn't have anywhere to film it. So we're thinking, well, we can film it in like the lobby area of my building, like the stairwell. Just put down like a fake desk, which is a cardboard box with a tablecloth on it, and be like, "Hooray, a bank!" Yeah, we have really no idea what we're gonna do. But Amit's like, "No, nah, dude, we can use." Because Amit just moved; he just bought a place, and uh, mm. he had this extra desk in a completely empty room, like completely unfurnished. Where he's just like, "Yeah, dude, you can come and use this," and we're like, "Thank you, so much." You did a really good job. Oh, dude, he was awesome. I mean, he was having fun with it, too. Like, we show up at this guy's apartment. I had no idea. Uh, he was just pretty much the only thing we could do. He was the only person we, could, we had, and the only person that would let us, you know, had space for us to do this. You don't know, like, I don't know what this, it looks like. I don't know what the desk looks like. I don't, know, I don't know if he can do the lines or whatever. And it all kind of worked out really well. It looks like it's, a, a you know, an office. You see, like, the cool, you know, street in, outside the window and yeah. the buildings. He's even got and, a decoration on his desk. Yeah, the desk looks like, you know, like someone's dead professional, like a stack of papers. And, and then he was really good with the lines, man. He was kind of, he added the line about the lottery and, and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was really good. Did he see the episode? Did you talk to him about oh, it? Oh, yeah, he saw it. He liked it. What did he say? He said that, uh, I, I like what you did with the bank thing. Um, I got top billing, huh? Nice. Yeah, it was Stuff an order like of that. appearance. So. Yeah. He, I think he was pretty happy about the whole thing. And the thing with the banker was I wanted him to be a sympathetic character. Like, this guy is being nice to Hole Punch. You know, he's doing his best, but he basically has to tell him, you know, if, I, I can't adjust your mortgage if there's no indication that you'll ever be able to pay me. Yeah, I mean, like, all of our characters are jerks, too. Yeah, Hole Punch is kind of snooty and everything, and he's well, completely deluded. Jerk, but, like, everyone he meets is a jerk he's to He's still him. a little, he's a little, he was a jerk just to, to Schnoz, man, when he thought he got into the league. Well, he's def he was defensive about it, but all I think... Right. I think most of the characters he find he meets are like just awful to him. Raposa. 
Yeah, so I think we were like, all right, let's have a guy. Like, well, he doesn't have to be wise. He have to be a jerk. You know, he's just kind of, you know, works for the bank. He's ju- he's just trying to, you know, to keep to do his job as a banker, try to help yeah. somebody keep his home. I do like how he's, you know, everyone's kind of comfortable with the fact that there's this weird dude. Yeah, like he's a little unnerved when I walk in, but you can see, but you know, you have the to. Superheroes wonder, aren't like completely out of the question in this universe. That's why. That's, I know. that's one of the things that is great about this scene. It shows that. Are they unusual? Yes. Are they completely? Uh, are they like? Are they rare? Yes. Are they unusual? No. Like people are really people are like aren't really comfortable with them, but they kind of know they exist. Yeah, like Raposa is in the news like every five seconds. Yeah, Raposa is a big deal. <laughs> He's like, all right, and then uh, of course this is like a really important scene in the in the really in the history of the the episodes because you know whole punch is like, I'm sorry, I can't tell you my real name. It's my mostly guarded. Personal secret. Yeah, and then he, the dude just looks it up on his computer. And, <laughs> and he's oh, like, your name's your name's Harvard Pryor. Because it makes sense because if you if he owns a property, it has to be in his real name. It has to be in a you know you can find out who all these people are. You know that's kind of like the the joke here. You know that he's like, doing a really hard to bad figure job. out who these, these characters these superheroes are because they have to. You can't just not exist in in today's world. You know. Yeah, and it's a good thing he has nobody that he cares about that could be injured because of him. He has to have credit cards. He has to have, uh, you know, all the stuff. So, yeah. And this is another one of those scenes where we just had magical cuts, like movies. Yeah, so there was one issue. With, there's one continuity problem. Was it's not yeah. bad. Yeah, I mean, there were there was a, another continuity problem early, on a different part in the episode too. But yeah, there was a, a magical cardboard box that appeared and disappeared. Really, I didn't even know about this. Oh, sorry. Nothing. You you heard nothing. You saw nothing. <laughs> totally legit. Uh, that's your fault for having too many boxes all over your place. Well, please tell me, have me stop ordering film equipment from Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> so, so whole bunch of his name is Harvard Pryor. Yeah. And I was like, dude, we gotta, we gotta have give this guy a name, you know. So, so, so I'm talking to OJ, and, and you're like. Well, I just thought like his initials were HP. That's why he, he named himself Hole Punch. One of the reasons. It's one of the reasons why he named himself Hole Punch. There's there are several reasons which. So actually- I started thinking about it, and I'm like. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And I'm like, all right, H. Let's call him Harvard, because then I came up with that whole thing about, which I was pretty proud of, about how that's what his parents named him. Yeah. Because that's what they, you know, ex- thought he could be, like a, you know, his, his future was so bright, and he was going to be so this, smart. like, Ivy League person. He's going to have this amazing uh, life, you know. And they, they had such hopes for their child, you know. And then Say what you will about Hole Punch. He built an amazing plunger tool. Yeah, but then things kind of went in an in a off direction, you know, for him. And then yeah, um, he gave himself the name Hole Punch. You know, we, we'll talk about that when we get to that part. But then the prior part, I'm like, all right, P. And that was kind of like a tribute to Richard Pryor. We have Harvard Pryor. Yeah. Like our Richard Pryor. That would be his last name, Pryor. So it's Richard Pryor kicked effing butt. Yeah, so like, that's a cool thing. You know, I like I like doing that kind of thing. So that's kind of like where that uh, last name came from. So I was, pre- I was pretty happy with that whole thing. Man. That's good stuff. I love that scene. I, I can't wait to show this to my parents. Oh, yeah? They, they don't understand it this time? They don't understand the other episode? I don't know. This one might be easier. My dad works in finance. Oh, yeah? <laughs> he'll, t- he'll tell me everything we did wrong. Ah. Uh, I'm sure there was a lot. I, I don't know. I don't go. To, I don't talk to people at banks. So I, don't, I don't have a lot of money, so. Oh. Oh, we got Shadows Man, and the lights are out. So he's trying to turn on the air conditioner. That was OJ's idea. Let's do a close-up of the... The uh, EC. Uh, that, was a, that was a nice touch. Thank you. Well, I think... Thank you. I think we wanted to show how hot the place was. Like, that he's, like, dying of heat. You know, it's super hot out. The electricity's off. They can't afford the air conditioning. Uh, There's another one people... This is what people really, I don't think, understood. Basically, like, he goes to get ice cream. Because he's hot. Because Well, in the previous episode, he ate ice cream also. Yeah. So he eats ice cream out of a bunch of fridge. But uh, the whole thing's melted, and then he just dumps it on the floor. Yeah, we well, actually did two takes of that. Yes. One we probably actually probably the other one. The one with the melted ice cream. There was one that actually had melted ice cream, but you, but OJ didn't want that like all over his, his house. So uh, what happens is Shazman takes it, and he dumps it out into the sink. Yeah, well, and you see, like, like you know why would he do that though? I'm like he would. This, this is the kind of guy that would just dump it on the floor. So then we're like, oh, let's just fill it with some water, and then I'll just dump it on the dump the water but out. But we did put chocolate chips in the water. Yeah, but you didn't really notice you, it. You heard them clatter. And then we got Shaw's man trying to turn on the TV. The this is really the strong. difference between now and then. Because if we did this in the past, it would have just been one shot. 
But now we're like, all right, let's do a back, and then we go to the front. We're <laughs> professional filmmakers now. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's really the difference, though. Like, it adds so much, doesn't it, though? Different angles, it livens everything up. Oh, my God, yeah. So that was one thing, like, this whole this whole sequence of, like, four or five events, it, it felt like it really flowed well. You're moving from one, you know, one thing to the other, and it's like, boom, 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 boom. You know? Yeah. Really cool. and then I yelled, and OJ was getting upset because I was... Uh, like, my neighbors were like, oh, my neighbors asked me if they were too loud. I'm like, no, I thought we were going to scare you with my friend Randall. We did this like six times for some reason. I was screaming. Just kept doing it over and over again. <laughs> we weren't even filming anymore, and I was just screaming. Yeah, that would make me sad and angry. <laughs> and then... Uh, now we got a whole bunch outside. Uh, this is uh, the North Street Shopping Center. And you actually had to come down. This is the first thing we filmed. Yeah, this was on a weekday, by the way. This was, yeah, this after, was like a, I, I get here after work. It's like a Monday night. It was like 7. And uh, John comes down to play and trade. Which kind of was like our home base for the night. And we had to wait for them to close before we could film there. So I was like... All right, let's go out and do what we got to do out in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, what was nice, though, what, what nobody really noticed is, first of all, that Hole Punch is wearing nice shoes and that uh, he doesn't have his belt, on, his utility belt on because, again, he needed to go to the bank and that could be misconstrued as a weapon. You didn't want to bring any weaponry. Yes. It was, it, was not, it was a different type of mission. Yes. Uh, yeah, going to this shopping center was cool. People didn't really get upset. I think one person was, like, beeping her horn or whatever. Yeah, a couple uh, but it was like late at night and in a Monday, and people were, you know, it was pretty quiet. So, is one of my f- through- yeah. People, people got to give you credit for this. People, people understand it's not just like, you know, we we always say like you you did a really good job of acting, but it's not just like here's your script, learn your lines. Like this is a whole other realm. You know, you're going out in public, where anything can happen, and and, it's, and we're not even supposed to be doing a lot of this stuff. You don't have permission really to be filming here. You know, but it's like, so, I mean, a lot of it's a little dicey and then maintaining the character and then also looking, you know, ridiculous and while you're doing it, that's not, that's not an easy thing to do. I don't know if a lot of people could do that. that are like professional actors. Just saying. Well, I hope they don't start trying because I need to keep this area open for myself. So, I mean, it's, it's a shoot, man. This is all, you know, real stuff, you know, just going out in the, into the public. Yeah, one of my favorite things about this, though, is that there's a spot where you film me in front of Baskin Robbins. And yeah. we didn't even notice this. There's a poster that says most likely to succeed. And I'm yeah. standing right in front of it, shaking my head in defeat. A lot of these stories, I'll like go inside and just come out. And I'm just feeling you coming out the door. Yeah, I-, I felt really nervous every time I walked into one of the stores. Oh, yeah. I mean, like a masked man walking into a store. I mean, that could be misconstrued as... I was uh, freaking out going up to those banks, man. You kidding? Yeah. It is a little crazy. Oh. I like this one, the, the giant grocery store, the, super, the food mart. Yeah. This, this and then broke the code factory, and then there's a woman coming out right behind you, and she doesn't even really notice you. Yeah, it's just like, oh, maybe maybe this hero's foiling a robbery. I don't and know. And then uh, this is another thing, like, uh, I thought there'd be a lot more comments about where you walk up to the, this is McDonald's. He walks up to the the drive through uh, box and is like, could I, uh, could I have a, a job? Are you, are you guys hiring? hiring? Yeah. And then I, w- I didn't know what we were going to do at that point because they didn't answer. Yeah, I don't know if it like come. I don't know if they could tell you're there or not. I don't know. Oh, you have to hit the pressure plate on the foot on the on the floor. They like just don't even say anything to him. I don't know. I I think they. I don't think they knew I was there. If if, I think in a lot of fast food places, you need something that weighs as much as a car to trigger the plate. No, they didn't respond to you. So which is probably for the best. And then uh, this is a really nice shot. I love this where you come out of the, uh, you know, the automatic doors open for you, and then when you come out. And you stand, there's like the sun is like setting. Yeah. And it's like right above your head. And then you kind of turn. And I, w- I wish we, I didn't anticipate, like, I didn't know that was going to happen. So I wish we maybe did something more with that. Like, you come out and then, like, look up at the sun or something. Yeah. Kind of like a Luke Skywalker deal, you know? Oh, that would have been beautiful. Well, I didn't really, I mean, it still was really nice, though. And the cape's flapping in the wind a little bit. Yeah. The song for that. Uh, it was pretty tough. It has two guitar parts. And it was an instrumental that I had for a long time. And I didn't really know what to do with it. I'm like, it's going to go in this episode. That's what I want to do. And the way I recorded it, it's 
I don't have actual like recording equipment for music. Uh, so what I have to do is I have to use my video camera. Ouch. And I I did one of the tracks and I, I put the video camera like up to the guitar and I, I, rec- I play it, put it into the computer, right? Yep. And I listen on headphones. I listen on headphones to that track and then I uh, play the next part while the video camera records it. <laughs> That's what you got to do. And then I combine them on Sony Vegas into one song. Isn't that how David Grohl, Dave Grohl did the beginning of the Foo Fighters stuff? I'm sure he had better equipment than well, that. Well, yeah, but wasn't it just him? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's different when you have like a you know an actual like uh, you know five track recorder, and you're like here's the track, put oh, it in. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm just like, saying. The I'm, like first of all, I'm using a video camera, which doesn't make sense for audio, and then listening with, on headphones when the other thing's not even in the same time, and uh, it's crazy. It took me like a whole day to do all the music. Wow. But you put a lot. Well, of work I was really happy with shows. it. I, was, I thought it was really good. A few people, uh, a few people really liked it, and some people were upset that. Uh, you know, they'd rather have a, you know, where's the stuff with the lyrics in it? We want the songs with the lyrics, which is cool. And you got to take it the right way because I think it means people want to hear me sing, which is kind of a cool thing. Yeah. You know, but I will say this, you know, the next three episodes will all have songs with lyrics because I know this because they're already done. <laughs> <laughs> and the song for the final episode is probably the best song I ever made. That was a really good song. I think you so, played it for me, didn't you? Uh, you heard like a version, but I, I still have to re-record it with like, you know, in a grander scale, but it's probably the best thing. Uh, it's re- it really kind of just sums up everything. I think it's really quite good. Nice. So, something special for you there. folks to wait for. Yeah. And then we got the Repo Guy. Repo Mania. And this is uh, my friend Joe, who you may know from uh, various playthroughs he's done uh, with myself and DSP. Um, he actually used to work with me at... GameStop, and then he moved, and now he came back. He was back for like a week, and he sent me. He called me. And he was like, "I'm back in town. I moved back here." And I was like, "You're gonna be in Schnauzman and Hole Punch." <laughs> and he came in. He did an awesome job. He uh, was cracking me. Like we we didn't even practice it. Yeah. Like I was like, "All right, here's here's the here's the uh, the script." When he showed up, because I never gave it to him before that. I was like, do you want to go through it? He's like, no, I got it. And then we start going through it. I open the door and he's like, repo guy. You know, and I start, I start laughing. So hard. We all started laughing. I was like, oh my God, you're <sighs> killing this. This is so funny, man. You're doing a great job with this. And then we did it a bunch of times and one of them, he was just going off and he was like, yeah, we're going to see Bon Jovi. The lady my, tonight. My old lady, she's doing her hair. She, she wants to see the guys uh, do their thing. And, and it, was like, it was hard to get through because it was just making me laugh so much, you know. It was very trying. But uh, he did a great job with it. I was thoroughly impressed. I mean, I, I'd never seen the fellow before, and he just nailed it. Yeah, you never met him, right? No. Nailed it right out of the park. And uh, the way we did the Schnozman thing was kind of weird. I mean, wasn't the best? wasn't the best thing ever. But you gotta remember, this is not like a uh, like a studio. You know, this is not like a movie studio. This is that's a, this my is, neighbor's door. We're covering. This is your apartment street. where you pay rent to a landlord. You can't destroy things or, or ruin things. Yeah. Or you have to pay for them. So we had to, you know, do something that's safe. And and uh, I wanted to show the snaz goo. And uh, this is probably as close as we could get to doing it without destroying things or. Well, um, there's some vacuuming still to do. Still. Ah, uh, there was. I had to pick a lot of that stuff up by hand. So I was like uh, a silly string type of uh, mixture. And I was like, all right, that's safe and it shoots. So he did that. And uh, I thought it was cool with the with the, um, the slow-mo deal. Yeah, I was worried that it was going to look like the silly string was coming from two points very far away from each other instead of two nostrils right next to each other. Yeah, I got it like, I, t- I think I threw it in there like after it's already hitting him, so... I don't know. I think people, a lot of people said that was their fo- their favorite moment. So it was pretty funny, and his reaction, like the first time, was so 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 beautiful. Yeah, we did it twice. We did it a bunch of times. Yeah, we did it a couple times. It was fun. I mean, he's like, ah, but, yeah. so now we got whole punch goes to uh, playing trees. This is his last chance. Yeah, I gotta say, I wish that my logo looked worse. 
Because it yeah. actually looks okay on film, and it's supposed to be terrible. It should just be like an H and then a P, without like colored in. You know, just like crudely, just like drawn in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is another one. You know. Well, first of all, let me say th- you know thank you to the- thanks to those guys at Plant Trade, uh, Danbury. I'm-, I'm friends with these guys. Kyle I used to work with at Nick. GameStop, and then he went there, and uh, Nick's a dude that I've been friends with a long time, and. Uh, I always go there and hang out with those guys. Uh, they actually worked at the store, so they're playing. You know, they're, they're, they work there. You know, you go there, you can see them. And if people ask, like, you know, where is this store, or or is this is that so and so store? I have the in the description of the video. I have the the full address, phone number, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. So you can go check that out if you want. But again, these guys aren't actors, and they did they did an awesome job. You know, Kyle kicked my butt. Yeah, Kyle's great. He's a great guy. Kicked my effing butt. Yeah, it was good stuff. And this was actually like, again, this was like the, the first thing we always film is always a little shaky, for some reason. Yep. And there's a couple of problems with this whole thing. Like you see some stuff in the background that shouldn't be there, and the audio, some of the other issues. But yeah, that was like uh, every time we take a break, you come back. It's always like the first thing is always a little screwed up. But I thought it was really cool, man. And, and like being in all game store like that, filming something. Oh yeah. The only problem was there were so many electronics there. Yeah. That it messed up the uh, audio, so we had to keep the microphone directly plugged in to the camera, so we had very little room to move it around. Yeah, there's all kinds of interference and stuff, and but uh, it went really well. And this is it's another thing similar to the the uh, Repo Man thing, where you know if I could do whatever I want, if I could write whatever I want, I would have him like you know knock over shelves and and you know all kinds of things like what would go on, right? Just destroy things. Yeah, but again, so this is a, this is a story. This is a it's not a set, you know. It's a working store. We can't break stuff. We can't cause too much of a disaster that has to be cleaned up. So it was like, all right, he's gonna tr- he's gonna try to go for this thief. And what happens is he trips on the cape because, like he said earlier, the cape is too long for him. And we tried to reinforce that a lot. John was adamant about it. I don't know if it worked or not, but that was the the idea that he made this cape that's too long. He says it earlier on. This cape is not my correct measurements. He trips on the cape and he falls into a stack of Xboxes and Genesis. Genesis's. Is... Genesis? I oh, know that was pretty good. Yeah, and the sound and effect. Nick, <laughs> Nick is our thief. He did a nice job. And I gave him a laugh that was actually a, hy- a hyena's laugh. <laughs> Laughy hyena? That was actually a hyena's laugh. Wow. That was perfect. Yeah, that was funny. That a whole bunch is buried under Xboxes and Genesis's. He tries to get up, but he can't do it. Sorry, I got like something caught in my throat here. I'm trying to. That's right. So, whole punch comes some. Chinaz man is on the floor because he's so hot. He's got a bag of peas on him, and uh, he's got the great line of uh, "Did evil infiltrate my home?" He says, "Yeah, vampires came in here, caused all sorts of chaos." This I begins mean- one of our technical problems because, like, throughout this entire scene, which is like six minutes. Buzzing noise. Yeah, what was that? I don't even know where, why. It's just sad, you know. We've filmed in that same spot so many times. There's never been this, this sound before, but just this one time, you know. Yeah. Something with, like, the connection cables or something is off. Yeah, I wonder... Also, again, with the frozen peas, I don't know if people really got that we are trying to show how hot it was. Yeah. Another thing, like, you, you he, whole punch is like, I'm going to go with the whole lantern because the lights are out. He comes back with a flashlight. No, we don't ever do anything with it. It's just there. Yeah, you probably should have had it on or something, I think. Yeah. Well, they have a... This was probably the hardest scene we ever did because there's just so much dialogue. It was tough. And then with the cuts back and forth and filming this this picture frame was a pain in the face. My friend yeah, he did it up. once and I was like, no, it's not good enough. <laughs> so we had to go back and do it again. So I did this actually while my friend was asleep. Like he came over uh, to visit from California because we were going to go to Otakon <clears throat> and uh, he filmed me holding the thing and he's like no it's not going to and John's like no it's not going to work so the next morning instead of recording the show I filmed the uh, close up of the picture frame again yeah that was our fault because we forgot to do it that day yeah <laughs> and if you'll note the picture frame has blue on it where the blue ate through the outer covering of the photo book we were literally like exhausted we were after, dead, dude. After filming this whole thing. Yeah, we, I mean, we were filming a t-shirt video, too. We were all just kind of... Ugh. So uh, let's talk about 
the uh, Shiraz man's bedroom. Justice League gave him the worst possible room, as he says. Yeah, and is the like a laundry like a laundry room. Yeah, like and he just throws that. down his throws down his uh, bedding and then sits. And then we got Wonder Woman comes in, a wondrous woman. The wondrous woman, yes. We don't get sued here. And of course, that's our uh, our buddy Lindsay, who's like pretty much down the street from you. And she was a great sport. Came in, puts on a crazy outfit. Walks around uh, an apartment complex with it on. As yeah, I've, we, we wrapped like, her in like, a blanket before we went down there. Yeah, she just wrapped herself in a blanket. I got a mask. And then John's got camera equipment, and we're just walking around. That's, and we're just like, what is going on here? Well, uh, luckily, no one came into this. This is a public... Uh, you know, yeah, I was scared that someone was going to come by and be like, what are you guys doing? And is it No people? one came in. It was fine. It was fast. Kept it short. Yeah, we, we didn't... That was before. funny. Oh, it, it was funny. Don't get me wrong. We had to say about the Adam thing. So the Adam thing was very difficult to do. Now, <clears throat> I filmed this completely by myself. Yeah, we thought this later on. Like this was the night. Never intent- it was never scripted. But then we're like, you were like, well, why don't we do something with the Adam? We talked about the Adam. Yeah. So what I ended up doing was we were we were like. <clears throat> this was the night before my my friend my friend was arriving the same day, so this was the, the the night before my friend and I were supposed to go to the city to go see a show and then go to Otakon the day after that. So it's not like I'm exactly swimming in time here. So I'm like, okay. So I go online. I found a picture of the Adams costume, and I just make the mask part and figure, okay, I'll cover the rest of me in a blanket. I trace the symbol onto the top in graphite pen, go over it with a Sharpie, cut it out, make it fit my head, swamp it down, and then this is where our giant green screen comes into play. I ordered the most cost-effective green screen I could find on Amazon, which ended up being a full 10 by 20 feet. Like, this thing is an effing beast, okay? Yeah, it's like, we talked about last, I told everyone about last week, but it's like the entire length of... Uh, it's like higher than your ceiling and, and longer than your apartment is. Yeah. <laughs> so what we ended up doing, what I ended up doing was I'm like, okay, I've got this thing. Um, I went, ran down to the laundry room and filmed a few different angles of the washers and stuff so that whichever one fits best we can use. I ran back upstairs. My friend's going to be coming down on a train any minute. And I'm like, okay, got to do this. I take my ottoman. Now this is where it was really effing dangerous and I probably shouldn't have done it. So I set up the green screen, you know, the floor part, the ceiling part. I set up the lights. I foolishly set the lights up on purpose to create a shadow, thinking, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, wait a second. The shadow on the dryer would be behind him to his right. So I'll set up the lights if there's a shadow. That's why there was a shadow. I didn't realize. Way too this. fancy, dude. Yeah, yeah. Excuse you me. tend to go over the top with stuff. Yeah. So I wrap, so I, I, I grab a blanket. I put a chair. I put a chair down in the middle of the green screen. I run over to. I pick up my rock band ottoman, stick a big metal piece of wood I have on it for stability, stick a tripod on it as high as the tripod will go, with the camera on top where I can barely reach it. Well, you all you have to do is just put the tripod out and go in front of the the, the camera. Is all you have to do. No, because you need a shot from above or it doesn't look right. Yeah. So I ran. Yeah, over- if you shrink them enough, I think it would be okay. Yeah, probably, but there hindsight. Or if you take the you take the shot of the. Uh, that's another thing. He's like, you're like you're like I took video of the of the uh, laundry stuff. Like why? Why do you what? Because it looks more real. It doesn't look real. It looks less real. Okay. I don't know. My bad. Well, either either you do way. It, oh, you just, you know, you try to make it as good as you can. So well, that's why I took. Sc- then I gave you screenshots of the video instead of the video when our internets failed to transmit it quickly enough. Well, I was glad, I'm glad we got that in. That was good. That yeah. Was good well, good there's stuff. more to this epic here. So I put the chair down, and you know I put duct tape, you know a little bit of masking tape on the green screen, you know where the edge of the chair is, so I know. Okay, I've got the height of the chair that I can go to, and I can go this far forward, and I record it, and then I realize, oh gosh. I wrapped myself in a blanket because I couldn't make a full costume, and it's funnier that way. I think if you just see him, like, wrapped in a blanket doing unknown things underneath it. And then the blanket kept getting cut off. It was too zoomed in. So I had to go in there, push the blanket so it was just barely covering the tape. 
It's because I knew that's how far forward the blanket could go. And then I just crouched there in an incredibly painful position for like a minute and a half, shake, rattling, and rolling to get this footage. I sent it to John the next morning. He's like, this is wrong. You got to go refilm it. I'm like, my <laughs> friend is asleep in the other room. I'm not waking him up for this. He's jet lagged to pieces. So what we ended up doing was I cropped the video and sent it to John. He's like, the part you cropped is coming out black. I can't green screen it. So I cropped it again and then filled in a green background behind the green background that I cropped out. And yeah, John's like, like Brett, use this. I positioned him like there's a back, there's black behind him. Yeah, that was. So that's, that's what that's what made it okay. Yeah, and I, you can't see the you can't see the issues, but I mentioned to a couple of my friends today, like, yeah, so that was me doing you know the Adam scene. They're like, wait a second, you're two characters. Ah. <laughs> What's wrong with you guys? I did not give you credit for that in the, uh... That's... A, I'll take that uncredited role because I don't want to be known as the chronic uncredited. masturbator, the Adam. Unpaid, uncredited. Chronic masturbating Adam. Oh, so, gosh. Uh, Talk about about particle physics! What I think about this uh, episode, I, I like how it has the, uh, the throwback to episode two. This is not... Because people will probably watch episode two and you're like, oh, he took money from this guy. Okay. But no, it means, like I said before, everything kind of leads to something and everything means something. So Schnozman took this money from this gentleman. And we get a flashback of that. Now he has money. And uh, after Hole Punch, it was kind of like the first person to ever really, uh, you know, believe his believe him that he was in the league or, yeah. or show him some kind of maybe kindness. Maybe this is someone that's just had a, a bad run. You know, at one point he was... Why not an optimistic, like he says? Which is things just went, went bad direction for him. Now he's kind of like a bitter person. Because it just completely disillusioned him. Yeah, and then, and, uh, he's, yeah, he's kind of like the opposite of Hole Punch or, or what Hole Punch could be. <clears throat> but he decides to, you know, give Hole Punch the money that he, that he has to uh, save the apartment, basically. Yeah, which is ridiculously nice of him. And then schnozzes all the people at the door. One of them being one of the Ninja Italians. Yeah. We recorded him screaming. When we had the Ninja Italians, that was also that was episode three. We recorded them screaming because I was going to use that, but I never did. So I'm like, I'll use it now. <laughs> yeah, like sweet, we've got some canned screams, y'all. Does that dude know about this? No. Some of my and other then, friends uh, watched it, and they're all asking me questions about the episode. So that oh, was yeah? pretty cool. Yeah. Like what? He's like. So what was blah, 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 blah. I don't remember the exact questions, but he was just asking me stuff. I'm like, yeah, that was me. Blah, blah, blah. That was that. That was John's idea. That's my friend Amit. That too was John's idea. Yeah. Oh, that, that line about frightening people with my incredible sucking tool. Yeah, 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 that line. Yeah, that was cool. And then at the end, I was afraid that people were going to watch the entire episode. Oh. I was really afraid of this. Well, it seems like everyone did. And at the end, uh, I got to use a new effect as well. That was a TV blur effect. Yeah. And I played the song that plays, like, during that, one, that little sequence is the uh, Schnauzman Hole Punch main theme played backwards. Yeah, creepy, no? And also on top of it, a slowed down version and a fast version. <laughs> That's, That's what that like was? A, yeah. It's a nice mix. And then you see a picture of Hole Punch with a, a person... Holding a, f a flower and uh, whole bunch of faces burn burns off. Yeah, that filming that dude, that was tough. Like, can we talk about that? Yeah, sure. We go outside to film that, and the picture won't burn. Like, I hold John's like burn my, burn your face away. So I hold the flame right next to my face, and it just kind of liquefies a little bit and doesn't burn. So we're like, uh. So we think, oh, maybe it's because it's on the ground, it can't get enough air. So we lift it up off the ground. I find a stick and lift it up off the ground. And we try burning it again <clears throat> from the top. And the flame goes, starts to catch. And it goes straight to where my face was. I think the liquefied, um, what's it called? The liquefied, you know, chemicals or whatever on that part mm. just made it extra flammable. So nothing else burnt but that part. Yeah. Oh, by the way... Don't try this at home and don't inhale. Just, just saying that. Don't play with fire. Yeah. <laughs> but that worked really cool. It just burns his face off. 
and the other the other individual is fine. Yeah, I still have that picture, by the way. I think so. That was pretty cool. And uh, this individual here has his own song, and the song that plays while this is going on is part of that song. So it all kind of ties together. People were like, "Who is this? I don't understand what's happening." Blah blah. blah. Again, this goes back to episode one. Probably that within the first minute of that episode has to do with this. Where Whole Punch talks about how he had a former roommate that was a florist, or was a florist, that one night disappeared. And that was why he that's that's the whole storyline, you know, why he needed a new roommate, why he prompted Schnozman to invade. And how he couldn't pay his bills, and then now he can, you know, that's like the whole thing, so. Yeah. So again, like this ties back to, I think, every single episode, doesn't it? One, two, three, four? What do you mean? The tablecloth is from four. Oh, every, the, yeah, everything. The money is every, from two. one or two. That's from that two. Part's from, that ending part is from one. Yep. And uh, you're, you're going to be seeing stuff from this one that things to do with things in the future, so. I think it's good storytelling. I, I, I think it is. I mean, I, I like, like, what, what usually ends up happening is John and I work on the, the main arc. Like, you know, where we want stuff to go. Yeah. And then John fills in all the details and then tweaks all the parts that don't fit to fit better. Yes. And I love it. And I think it's really cool. So we take our time. Yeah. She does made a little push. We'll return. Eventually. Yeah, although you keep trying to scare me, man. It'll be awesome. Nah, I just, you know. But, uh... Yeah, he's taunting me the whole time we're filming, too. <laughs> I just messed with them. Don't worry about But, uh, yeah, I mean, the story is there, and, uh, I think it, I think it's, it only gets better, because I think the... Everything you've seen so far is like, oh, you know, people are like, I want to see action. Oh, it's just people talking, blah, blah, blah. Well, we established the characters over the course of the five episodes. You know? When you get to the crazy stuff... The crazy stuff will mean more if, the, if you care about the characters involved. And I think it was important because now we established that Shazman and Hole Punch are now kind of coming together, uh, which is important. And so they're they're not really enemies with each other anymore. Yeah, the whole thing was to kind of make this semi relationship, establish who they are, and who they are to each other. Who they are to each other, and maybe hopefully they mean something to the audience. And now you can do stuff with them that makes you go, oh, crap, you know, this whole punch in danger is so, this is, is you know, and you feel worried or you feel, you know, perhaps upset at times of the things that could happen. What you know, could so. go wrong? Hole punch is a superhero. Superheroes are never in danger, ever. They live a very, yeah, that, very peaceful lifestyle. I think, I think uh, we've got to wait a little while before the next one, basically because I have to learn how to do a couple things. <laughs> it's going to be big, folks. Otherwise, I will say this, I don't want to put another one out until all three are done. So I want to have all three done, and then we then we put them all out. Yeah, so... So you'll see, because it, the way the arc is, I don't want there to be like two months in between them, because it's just going to ruin it. It'll it'll destroy the effect that we're going for. So there's going to be like a month eventually coming up where, again, there's no videos, and it's just going to be us working on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. It's going to be tough, folks, but if we can get through it, you can get through it too. It's gonna be good though. I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, a lot of the, the the script and stuff. So. Yeah, I mean we've got a. I mean we've scripted out a bunch of at least what we want to happen. We just need to flesh it out more. So by the way, this is the longest show we ever did. It's going to be. And this was the longest episode of Schnozman and Hole Punch we ever did. I don't even know how this happened because it was supposed to be the longest show. But... I just looked at how long I've been on the phone with you, John. <laughs> um. Because we're not recording the whole time we're on the phone, but Skype is telling me how long we've been on the phone. Yeah. Do you have to go? Because I have to do the State Ballsy IVN members. I'm good, man. I'm good. Okay. So we're now inducting the new members of the State Ballsy IVN. There's the Intergalactic Video Network. Prepare yourselves. I'm going to read down the list. Read. Thank everyone that joined. Uh, next week, as I said, we'll be announcing the set date of the StateBallsy.com website, which is where your videos will be showcased i will then give you more instructions on how to uh you know let me know obviously i'm going to ask you to uh you know let me know which video you would like to be uh featured you know don't send me like five at once because this is going to go 
on for a long time. You know, Cindy Long. It's a lot of work for John, is what I'm saying. It's kind of a big undertaking. We'll see how it goes, but I think it should work out. Oh, there is one other thing I want to say when we're done with this, too. Say it now. I just want to say, if any of you guys uh, stopped over at my friend's Kickstarter campaign for Do Move Say, it was funded. They made the money they needed, so uh, thank you all wow. very much if you stopped over there. Yeah, they got it. $15,081. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, so I will have a copy of that game um, in PDF format probably by the end of the week, and I'm hoping to bring it with me to Gen Con, so hooray! Excellent. All right, so let's get on the list. PS3 TNA, TNA Gaming, who I mentioned that I forgot last week. I'm going to mention him now. And he did win the shirt. So, youtube.com slash PS3 TNA Gaming. And also on blip.tv slash PS3 TNA Gaming. We have Swampy Goose. Pescaphobe. Repaz 3. My Cousin Moe's. Perhaps a reference to The Office. I don't know. Phyrexian Nighthawk. Yeah! New Guy 2015, Sleazehead, 1996 Metallica. Seriously? That's the guy's name, 1996 Metallica? That is awesome. Coke Matthew, Mr. Coolmanist, Coolmanist? Mr. Coolmanist? I don't know how. PNB Gaming, Iberian Mallet. That guy sounds like he gets hammered. Get it? Sorry. That's Spacey. I Baker Boy TV. Shield Potion 35. Shield Potion? Yes. Nice. Scottish Warrior 92. Aye. Phantom Shark Gaming. Schizophreniac. Monkey YZ2. Symbiote 1996. Nice. Good call. LP Chazzy Person. Jameis 11 or Jamass 11? I don't know which one. Uh, you might want to get that straightened out. Future Liquid EG. Caesar the Pleaser CDP. I like that one. Caesar the Pleaser CDP. Average Silas. Average Silas. Popo 7994. Axial Assassin. Yeah, I know that guy. Swampy Goose. Cobalt Crisis, 13, Strong 1, The Blue Nova King, <laughs> Adventure Hero, I suppose Hero with a Zero, Rock Hope, it's uh, H-O-P-P-E, Tobias Life Videos, Splatnation.com, Splat? Splatnation.com, Veggie Punch, My Boy I Am The King, Okay. Warrior TCO4. Reading the Blood Edge. And Torberin. Torberin. That, that name sounds familiar. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now, of course, uh, all these links will be in the description box of this video. I wonder if there's a limit on description boxes because it's going to be really huge. We're going to find out one way. We're going to find out eventually. Uh, I believe there's now over 100 members, I, I believe. By the way, I exactly. have you yeah. ever listed Fresh OJ Sun Pulp as being a member? You are not a member because you never listed it on your channel that you are a member of the Steve Ball Z. It's your logic video ever. Seriously? <laughs> seriously? Why would you not have it on there? Um, because I thought... Well, oh, here's the deal. You know what? I actually kind of changed the rules. If you don't want to list anything that you're a member, you don't have to do so. But we'd appreciate it if you'd write your Steve Ball Z IVN Network Director or IVN uh, Steve Ball Z IVN director, or you can spell it all out, True Lactic Video Network director, whatever you want to do. What we're going to do is I'm going to actually put uh, some of the logos, you know, make the logos available for people so they can use them. Oh, that's cool. Or some of the intro uh, uh, things I do. Oh, you. nice. So, that is it, OJ. I'm done. Don't leave us. We love you. <laughs> Don't leave back. <laughs> I will be back soon. I look forward to it. That sounds kind of weird. Sorry, it's been a long Tuesday. All right, sir. We're done here. All right, everyone. Thank you. For OJ, this is John signing off. Thank you for listening to John Presents. The best in free and optional entertainment. Good night. Good night. Good night.